in accordance with the open meeting law. The board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? The speaker's working? Yeah. Sorry for the late delay. We had a lengthy executive session meeting that overran by almost a half hour, so please accept my apologies. Anyone here for public comment? Any, um, any selections reports? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, two or three things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to... Uh, Note that uh, the, the passing of our former state senator, uh, Bob Buell, uh, passed away. I don't know if people read it in the paper this uh, past weekend. And uh, Bob has been out of office for a little while, about 20 some odd years. Uh, senator Tarr took his, took his place. But Bob Buell uh, served as our state senator for uh, about 16 years and uh, did a fantastic job of representing this community in the district at the time with 17 communities. I know because I ran against him in 1982. One of the finest guys I ever uh, ran against and, uh, and lost. And, and you know, while I lost and I was sad about that, I wasn't sad about losing to Bob. Bob was a fantastic individual, uh, great uh, representative for this community, um, very visible in the town of North Reading over his 16 years. And prior to that, he was 10 years as a state representative from the center part of the district <coughs> out of Boxford. And, uh, no one had a, an ill thing. He was one of the most difficult people to ever run against because everybody liked him. I mean, I liked him. I, our politics were a little bit different. But uh, he was very straightforward, shot from the hip, told you exactly where he stood and why, uh, and it, always with a smile. And when you had a disagreement, he wasn't disagreeable at all. Um, again, as a member of the minority party, uh, and at the time it was even a smaller minority party, um, he got along very well and was able to work across the aisle. and was a very effective uh, state senator for our needs and uh, put forth a substantial amount of special legislation on our behalf and was extremely successful in getting it, uh, getting it through. So uh, you know, Bob was 87 years old. Uh, his wife, Jean, was an absolute sweetheart. Uh, he has a son, Stephen, who lives in town here. So uh, again, uh, it's, it's sad, to, sad to see him go, but a uh, terrific uh, state senator and uh, going to be sorely missed. But his uh, service is greatly appreciated. Thank you. For uh, Secondly, um, on a more happy note, you know, Chris Deming, our uh, DPW foreman, his wife Renee had a birth of, birth of their, uh, their daughter. Um, Meredith, um, what, was it Monday? Sunday or Monday? He was going. Was, he was going in Sunday, a week ago, so I don't know whether she had it real quick or not, or the baby real quick or not. But uh, their first child, and uh, I saw him the Friday before, and he said he was ready for the change. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> and he said that timing wasn't going to be so good other than the fact that uh, he isn't going to be sleeping when it's snowing anyway, so new parent. But congratulations uh, to Chris and, and Renee on the birth of their daughter. And finally, just a question on um, uh, to the town administrator in relation to uh, National Grid. Has they uh, been forwarded a copy of our resolution? Have they responded? And has there been any uh, outreach or meeting set up? Through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, we obtained the, the final signature for the resolution um, on Thursday and sent it out via U.S. mail on Friday of last week. Uh, we were in communication with National Grid's representatives the day following the board's uh, vote, um, expressing um, the request for both the emergency response plan and the infrastructure mapping here in North Reading. Um, their response appears to be um, initially cooperative, um, uh, expressed a willingness to meet and to review the documentation with us. Um, they uh, are uh, provided us a copy of their emergency response plan, which we're in the process of renewing. We had a, a bit of an issue with um, a link to the plan, but got that corrected late last week. So uh, I would say they've been cooperative and they've been responsive, um, but the proof will be in, in sitting face to face with them and looking at that mapping and getting a better understanding of what's going on in North Reading. Um, we do not have a meeting date yet. I expect that it will be sometime shortly after town meeting and I'll continue to keep the board informed. Thank you. 
I think we're going to have to probably make a charter change to allow car seats then in the uh, trucks. <laughs> 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 so we can keep Mr. Deming working. Any other <coughs> slide reports? Mr. Masseri. Uh, just a report to the board that we had a sub water sub and uh, water and sewer subcommittee meeting. And we have another one scheduled for this Thursday. And uh, this is in the process of keeping the water uh, program going as we get a, an FEIR uh, submitted. Uh, we learned uh, that we need to identify location for the chlorine insertion on Main Street yeah. prior to f filing the FEIR. And uh, with respect to sewer, as we look downstream, uh, we need to have a discussion of what we view as the sewer districts. Uh, and uh, we're working to try to get that better defined before we have a full board communication about that compensation. So we have to have a, prop a parcel identified prior to the final approval? That was... For the water, the chlorination. Is that what you heard too? Y yes. yes. That, that, that's a change in direction from what I remember. Oh, I didn't even was <laughs> No? No, you have to describe everything you're doing. Right. You have to describe it, but I didn't know we had to identify the exact parcel. Um, they want, yes, you have, to, you have to be able to secure it. You have to be able to tell them where you're going to be. Okay. We'll probably... It, it clarified. It, it's, we don't, you don't need it to submit the notice of to change. And okay. Move with the FBI Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Okay. I'm clear now. That's it. Yep. Mr. Schultz. Uh, I was in the grocery store the other day. I got stopped by a senior by the deli counter who was, Mr. Schultz, Mr. Schultz, I want to thank you. So what? Well, he was very happy with the Merrimack Valley Transit Authority uh, ring a ride to go to his doctor's appointment. He sent me an email. And he wanted me to read this into the record. It's real short. It says, hello, Mr. Schultz. I had reason to use the MRTA on September 17th due to a personal transportation problem. As a first-time user, I thought it was superb. The intake phone call was pleasant and informative. A full explanation of what to expect was given and it was accurate as to time of the pickup of my home and payment procedures. The driver was pleasant, professional, neatly dressed. The van bus was clean as a whistle, along with the floors, windows, and seats. I arrived at Leahy Peabody with about 20 minutes to spare, and that always helps with intake. Felt safe and comfortable all the way. Kudos to the MRTA and the town for providing such an inexpensive way to get to health care. Thank you, Richard Giordano, 12 Southwick Road. You might know him as Mr. G in the park. I um, was very happy with the service and just want to reiterate to our seniors, there is a way to get the doctor's appointments through the uh, Merrimack Valley Regional Transportation Authority. Thanks. We are coming up on a year um, and we said after a year we would uh, reevaluate, get some data, pr present the data to the town and look at those areas that we didn't have a lot of ridership to it and maybe replace them with areas that people wanted that we didn't have on the list. So that will be coming up in the future. Once we get past October town meeting, we'll have a little more time to focus in on that. But I'm, I'm really happy with the program. I think it's going well, and I do hope the community continues to keep using it. Anything else, Mr. Schultz? Ms. Minnie Pelly? Just something really quick. <laughs> There's been a lot of uh, social media chatter about the ballot questions, and there was something mailed out so that you ha we all have a good sense of what they're about. But if you didn't happen to see that, the Secretary of State has a summary posted on the website to check it out for more information on those questions. Okay. That's it. Very good. <coughs> Sign the state election warrant. Mr. Goldborough. Mr. Chairman, through you, a copy of the state election warrant has been prepared by the town clerk. The constable is here to witness the uh, signing, and we've included a motion for the board to uh, vote to sign the election. This is for uh, the election November. It's like, do we have to? Or? No. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me just make this easier for everybody. Mr. Chairman, I move to sign the November 6, 2018 state election warrant. Second. I have a motion, a second by Mrs. Mignopelli, was it? Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. What to say, John? I know. I know. I should know that. I know.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next on the agenda, approve and sign Verizon Cable Franchise License Agreement. Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, Cable Advisory Committee has been negotiating with Verizon for a new um, cable franchise agreement between the town and Verizon for allowing Verizon to operate here in North Reading. This is on the heels of their um, negotiation, which concluded with Comcast earlier this year, resulting in a 10-year agreement. I believe that Mr. Strobe is here. Ed, are you going to present the agreement to the board? Okay. If you want to maybe come to the podium, through you, Mr. Chairman. Please. Mr. Strobe. I'm assuming the presentation's on this. The TVs are off, so I think that's probably it right there. Uh, yeah, it is. I'm just going to go with this then. Hi, my name is uh, Ed Strobe. I'm chairman of the uh, Cable Advisory Commission. Uh, attending tonight is Paul Train, who represents Verizon. Um, in the crowd, he might just finish. <coughs> I just wanted to give a quick uh, update of the procedure and what we negotiated uh, with Verizon. I don't think this is set up right, so I'll wing it a little bit. Um, just to give you an update of what we have to do. Um, Cable service is regulated by the. Oh, what's that there? Yeah. I thought I knew what it was doing. What's this? <laughs> just scroll through. Is that up? Yeah. Um, the cable services are uh, regulated by federal and mass laws, and um, um, they control how much uh, the town can receive and. Uh, and what, what, uh, what we're pay, uh, receiving money on. Uh, you basically, uh, they have a setup so that they're able to use our wiring to get into each of the homes. And because of that, we're, uh, we're be we benefit from receiving funds that are uh, attached to each uh, individual user. Um, the license is granted by the Board of Selectmen as the issuing authority, so um, it's your final choice tonight to uh, vote on that. In, uh, in, correction, in uh, connection with the Verizon license, uh, they also give us three PEG stations. And uh, Verizon has also signed up to give us an HD uh, line as well, which is great because that will bring us uh, into the future as well. So that's for uh, 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 going forward. Uh, for the last year and a half, we've been doing ascertainment, basically uh, running public meetings, interviewing users, talking to different groups to find out what the NARCAM needs are as well as what the town's uh, needs are as well. So uh, when we went into our negotiation, this is part of the goals and our targets that we're shooting for. Uh, based on that ascertainment, uh, we uh, negotiated the franchise fee as well as the capital investment. Uh, what also came up because of Comcast was uh, INET is now going to come under the town's uh, responsibility. But, uh, the Verizon license was last negotiated uh, back in 2006. Uh, this license expired on June of, uh, two, of uh, 2018. The license that we're discussing at this point is going to be a five-year license. Um, so we negotiated uh, a 5% uh, uh, fee that will be uh, charged to each uh, cable user, and that will be given to NORCOM. Um, based on the cable cost and those types of things. Uh, we're also receiving $125,000 for capital investment for NARCAM or, uh, to basically <coughs> spend on capital um, improvements. One of the things that they're trying to do is get a new office as well as new equipment you know, to move us into the future. 
Uh, that money will be paid over five installments. Uh, the length of this contract is five years. That's a little different from the Comcast, but uh, with uh, cord cutting and everything that's going on, we just felt uh, Verizon wanted it and we thought it might benefit us as well to be able to maybe move a little quicker if there's some big changes. If you think about where we were watching cable three years ago and where we are today, it's, it's changing drastically. And I have to, um, with respect to the INET, Verizon has agreed to um, support us in the upgrade of the opto um, fiber and uh, that uh, upgrade is uh, to help transmit the data that the town's going to run on that Comcast had done in the past. So I thought that was a positive on, on uh, Verizon. And then under the uh, agreement, uh, they're, going, they're agreed to issue uh, $70,000 over five years paid directly to the town, the issuing authority, and that will be paid on quarterly basis. basis. So that's really kind of a quick update. I don't know if anyone has a question. Or you good, Mr. Good. Mazzari, with Mr. Good. O'Leary? I'll tell you, the, the Cable Advisory Committee has done a terrific job uh, on this contract, but also the Comcast uh, negotiations uh, to ensure that NORCAM has adequate funding uh, moving forward, as well as uh, uh, providing, you know, an INET, uh, some funds to go towards uh, replacement of the INET, but we're going to have full responsibility for it moving forward. So uh, they're very cognizant of our needs. They uh, took care of that, conveyed it to uh, the vendors, Verizon and Comcast, and came out what I consider to be a favor very favorable terms. That's great. And the <coughs> INET is um, getting transferred up, up the high school? Is that where we're going to be installing it? The hub is at the high school. The hub, the, the, the the hub, hub is at the, at the um, high school. I hesitate to, hesitate to even use that word because we currently have a hub and spoke system. We're moving away from that. A system that's more um, described as a star, I think, is the way it's been described to me, so that there's some redundancy. So th th that's the <coughs> central point, but we are on also schedule for that? I'm sorry? Is it on schedule? Uh, so as of the last meeting in August, I believe we were. I looked to the finance director to confirm, but I believe we were on schedule. Um, talking with a consultant about when the installation would occur. Thank you very much, Mr. Strobe, and all your folks in your uh, committee. Thank you for your time, and Verizon especially, for working so closely with everyone to get that completed. So we'll take a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve and sign the agreement between the Town of North Reading and Verizon New England, Inc. I have a, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schultz. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. There's two copies here that we need signed. I'll pass them around. In the meantime, while we're signing, we can go ahead and enter the 8 o'clock Warren article informational hearing. Again, I do apologize for the delay. We had some lengthy executive session discussion. Uh, for those of just tuning in, that delayed us about a half hour. So we appreciate your understanding and cooperation. So Mr. Gilberto, I'm going to turn the hearings over to you. And if anyone is here to talk to, um, on any of the particular warrant articles, what I'm asking you to do is please go to the podium, state your name and address, and I will recognize you. And, uh, and just through, please just run all your questions and comments through the chair and we should be able to complete this hey, process. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I might, maybe I'll read the notice. Yes, sir. Please. Okay. Notice of informational hearings. The North Reading Board of Selectmen does hereby notify the residents of the Town of North Reading that hearings will be held on the following articles contained in the October 15th Town Meeting Warrant will be held October 1st, 2018, 8 p.m., Room 14, Town Hall, Articles 1 through 22. These hearings will be held pursuant to Sections 18 through 25, Chapter 30A of Massachusetts General Laws, the Open Meeting Law. Any interested citizen is welcome to attend and participate in these hearings. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to actually ask to just do the presentation from my seat there so that if there's any sure. presenters that want to come up, they can do so. And as we're going through the warrant articles, I did make a recommendation on um, selecting members' assignments. But if you have an article there that you don't want to do or you, there's something else you absolutely just throw it out as a suggestion so we can finalize this as we go through each one as well. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
So I will begin the presentation with reviewing uh, the available funds uh, as of today as we go into this town meeting. And one of the things that we have mentioned along the way is that we are awaiting certification from the Department of Revenue of our free cash effective June 30th, 2018. We received that notification uh, today from the Department of Revenue with the certified free cash number as is presented above at $4,060,380. Um, going through the... Um, the rest of the available funds here, we have just over, just under $2.3 million in stabilization funds. And, and there'll be further detail on the free cash that we'll provide in the next slide. I'm going to ask the finance director to speak to it. But just going through this briefly, stabilization at just under $2.3 million. Our cell tower revenue account at $500,000. Our ambulance revenue account at $926,831. Debt capital stabilization fund at $902,000. Water infrastructure stabilization at almost 1.9 million water retained earnings as of June 30th 2018 the closeout of this last fiscal year at nine hundred eighty one thousand forty four dollars solid waste stabilization at one hundred thirty seven thousand five hundred seventy one dollars and the OPEP trust uh, currently stands at one million four hundred sixty eight thousand one hundred eighty one dollars so we generally do this review um, probably the most notable thing on there is the free cash and I'm going to ask the finance director to go through um, an overview of the uh, uh, how we got to that number. It is larger than we've seen in recent years, so there are multiple factors that are contributing to that. And again, I'll ask the finance director to speak to it. Sure, thank you. Um, as the town administrator mentioned, free cash is larger than um, past trends. You'll see up there um, all the other um, enterprise funds, retained earnings, um, and the amounts that were certified. All these amounts are certified as of 7118 for year ending June 30th, 18. This is just a comparison between FY17 and FY18, just to show you where we were last year with free cash as well as retained earnings and the increase and decrease over FY17. This is um, detail, or I guess this is the summary and then we'll see um, a little more detail on the next slide. This just basically summarizes how we came to the 4060000 of free cash. And you'll remember um, on August 20th, we reviewed all of the departmental general fund um, turnbacks, and you can see that amount up there. So the general fund expenditure turnbacks was 2.7 million. That includes employee benefits, debt service, and then all the departmental budgets as well. Um, general fund revenues in excess of expenses um, came in at a million five, almost a million six. This includes the pro forma tax that we received from Colte Homes um, in excess of $200,000 that we received. And um, another or two significant items that help in, um, increase the free cash balance is that our real estate and personal property receivables are um, down and um, deferred revenue is down as well, which means that collections are up. And this is just um, a broad overview, um, breaking it down into the big pieces. We looked at all of the individual departments on August 20th, and this is just basically a snapshot of the major turnbacks. So health insurance um, turnback was $633,000, but of that, 410 is attributed to um, the participating funding arrangement. Um, the debt service budget, we turned back 234000 Other pension and benefits, so this makes up um, Middlesex Retirement uh, uh, Annual Appropriation, Workers' Comp, Unemployment, and so forth. And then departmental is all of the town's um, departments. So this is strictly town side. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Ms. Rourke, can you go back to that last slide? Uh, I'm sorry, you had it. There it is. So in the departmental, mm -hmm. that number, is there something else in there that we, don't tip, that we didn't have in there last year? Is there anything new this year that I... That was turned back? Yeah. That, that um, was something was, so was, there is, there are just large, um, you know, uh, larger turn backs. Um, the police department <coughs> was a large turn back. The reserve fund transfer with the finance committee um, was a, you know, large turn back for their budget um, dollar amount. And... Um, there's, 
you know, different items. The salary pool is a department within the departmental, so that got turned back. Um, now, do we, we haven't done that in past years, have we? So in past pool? years, the salary pool we've had to carry forward, um, not the entire salary pool, but a portion of it for the contracts that were still pending. Right. Um, right now, we don't have any that are pending, and the Department of Revenue, um, as long as they are ratified by June 30th, then you can carry over funds. If they're not ratified by June 30th, you cannot carry over funds. So we have two contracts that are expired right now um, that we may need to adjust the salary pool figure for. Um, but typically the trend has been since FY16, we've carried over funds to cover contracts that you know were in the middle of negotiations. Yep. So that is a change, um, but we don't always turn, we don't always carry forward the whole salary pool budget. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Masseri. In, in our estimated receipts, were there any significant changes there? Um, in every area of our estimated receipts, we came in over what we had estimated. Um, you know, motor vehicle excise was over, um, license and permits was over. Um, so the, every category was uh, achieved the the budgeted amount for them. Okay. And, uh, Michael, uh, I know that we're waiting for some information. Could you uh, make sure the presentation is put in our, uh, what used to be Dropbox? Share file, <laughs> yes. Please continue. Yeah, share file, I'm sorry. Because uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, have that information. Sure. Uh, okay. It's the only place it is right now is on that laptop, but as soon as we're done, I'll put it there. Okay. Thank you. And I will turn it over now to the town administrator to start the warrant article, please. So we uh, put a, a summary of uh, funding sources up here um, right now for um, the articles. You see a number of them are free cash. You know, many of them are um, transfers that we've been projecting for a period of time here. Some of them are one-time projects or planning efforts that are on there, and we'll go through them individually as part of this hearing. Taking the articles in order, <coughs> number one, article one is to hear and act on reports of town officers and committees. Uh, this is typically the point in time where uh, officers or committees ask for the floor to provide an update to the uh, community. Um, I've not been contacted directly by any that I'm aware of um, that are seeking it, but we certainly expect that there will be some updates provided. Moving along to Article 2, prior year bills. I look to the finance director to confirm, but I believe as of this moment we still do not have a prior year bill, or do we? To my knowledge, we do not have any prior year bills, um, and that was as of last Wednesday, I mm -hmm. believe. So. Okay. Moving forward to Article 3. Again, we'll, we'll update the board during the um, meeting uh, in advance. Um, yeah, of the meeting of the 15th. Article 3, the transfer of funds into the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Our um, funding plan calls for a transfer of uh, $200,000 from free cash uh, per our fiscal year 2019 capital plan. This would bring the, the fund balance up to $1.102232, um, $1,102,232. I just want to make a quick note. Again, we, we've had some you know late breaking developments relative to the certification of free cash so there is going to be additional discussion both between the finance director myself and the chairman of the board as well as the financial planning team on uh, how to proceed given the number being larger than it normally is uh, in place but uh, right now our financing plan calls for the numbers that are identified here and that have been referenced in the previous conversations if there's any amendments to those we'll bring them back to the board for a further recommendation the evening of town meeting Moving along to Article 4, appropriation of money to the Stabilization Fund, which is the town's rainy day fund. Um, we're evaluating a potential transfer to be made from free cash. As I referenced uh, the other day, my intention is to recommend at least a transfer of $100,000 into the Stabilization Fund uh, at October town meeting. Again, we'll continue to evaluate what that dollar amount actually is in the context of a larger financial plan for the duration of this fiscal year for both October and June town meeting. Again, our balance is just under 2.3 million. 
Article 5 is a transfer of funds to the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Uh, as of the moment, we are not recommending a transfer into that fund at this point in time. We have, uh, over the past few years, been appropriating funds into that account by, uh, through June Town Meeting and through our financing plan uh, through Raise and Appropriate. Um, and we did make a transfer in at this past June Town Meeting. The balance is just under $1.5 million. Article 6 is appropriating funds to the Participating Funding uh, Arrangement Fund. Fund is a reserve account to pay for the town's portion of future employee health insurance costs. Uh, due to an error in the June 2018 town meeting warrant, the fund was incorrectly named Participating Funding Agreement Fund, and it's proposed to be correctly renamed the Participating Funding Arrangement Fund. The recommended transfer is just over $410,000, <coughs> which reflects the town's portion of remaining funds from the fiscal year 2018 employee health insurance program. The employee portion is reserved separately. Um, <coughs> that information just became available to us today. And that will be the first transfer into that fund, which will bring it to a, a balance of just over $410,000. Article 7 is amending the fiscal year 2018 operating budget. And just to review, the Water Department, um, what we, we had the town meeting vote in early June uh, at town meeting. Prior to us being able to finalize the um, um, amount of money required for the purchase of water, um, subsequently, we, the IMA was finalized. That was right before the water rate hearing took place in the later part of June. And at that meeting, with the board was able to approve a 0% rate increase. So this action, the first bullet, would reduce our expenses by reducing the purchase of water costs by $158,858. And that's to reflect the lower cost of purchasing water from Andover due to the 99-year intermunicipal agreement that was finalized after June Town meeting. <coughs> and prior to the water rate hearing. This is an administrative action we've been forecasting all along and it's something that we'll uh, be recommending to take place. Um, second item is not up there on a bullet, but it's an adjustment to salaries for the uh, building department and it's a restoration of um, code enforcement salaries for the assistant building inspector, something that I previewed in a public bill, uh, meeting uh, in August, I believe August 20th. That's a cost of $14,356 to be funded through raise and appropriate, and that would re uh, re uh, uh, restore a reduction in article in, in hours for the, com the formerly combined assistant building inspector slash DPW position, which will now be solely dedicated to uh, the workload in the building department. Um, so that's a $14,356 cost. It's not on here, but I just want to identify that. And then the finance director tells me that there's a, an issue with regard to the finance department salaries uh, appropriation, uh, that the final recommended appropriation didn't reflect the actual intention for maintaining um, the uh, part-time assistant finance director position. Um, this would correct that by appropriating $12,923 to that department while maintaining the position at its current number of hours, which is... 30. 30. And then um, finally, as is identified up here, the new DPW director and police chief have reviewed conditions at uh, water facilities. Select security and access enhan enhancements have been identified with a projected cost of $200,000 proposed to be funded with water enterprise retained earnings, which was just, again, just under $1 million for this current fiscal year. In the interest of keeping the water supply protected, we are unable to publicize the details of these enhancements for what I think are obvious reasons, uh, but this is something that has been identified by the new DPW director and the police chief and that we are recommending be brought forward to town meeting for consideration. Um, and we would ask the board, based upon these uh, three items that I've identified, excuse me, four items that I've <coughs> identified to consider uh, favorably recommending that article at this evening's meeting. Do we want to do that now? I leave it to the chairman to you know, determine how to get a, well, we you are, want to ask for input and then? Yes. Uh, we already recommended it, though, right? But now we've changed it. We have to do it again. So we left it as recommended town meeting because we would not, did not have final numbers for uh, recommendations okay. for, num for amounts. Yeah. And we I'd believe like these are final. Again, if they change, we'll ask the board to revote them. <coughs> we should take. We should do it now. Keep yeah, it I don't know if there's any other public input. <coughs> Any questions? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend uh, Article 7 as uh, presented uh, by the town administrator. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? 
None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> Article 8 would amend the fiscal year 2019 capital expenditure budget. The capital budget approved at June town meeting included two projects for which the funding source was not correctly identified. This would resolve that issue by clarifying that the technology instructional equipment for the school department was funded with $45,000 in free cash. Um, it should be $45,000 from the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. This would make that correction as is printed in the warrant. Similarly, the same for the Recreation Center IRP walkways. We, it was voted as Parks and Recreation Enterprise Fund. It should be Parks and Recreation Retained Earnings. So this would make that correction at this point in time. Um, no additional funds are being requested under this particular article. And the board has previously recommended. Article 9 would fund repairs to town, be town buildings. Um, we have a project that's been identified by the building superintendent to address HVAC both here in uh, room 14 as well as in the conservation and planning office here at town hall for a combined cost of $50,000. I know that there was some additional information that came in from the vendor today um, with regard to a potential um, uh, need for um, some makeup air for the scope. I think that's something the building superintendent is working on. Right now, this is the plan uh, for, the, for there. I do feel it fair to let folks know that we are looking at that. If there is any need to adjust that, we'll bring it back to the board and submit it to the finance committee as well for their consideration um, before town meeting. But right now, the dollar amount is not, not projected to change at this time. A source of funds? Free cash. <coughs> Free cash. Free cash. Free cash. <coughs> Through you, Mr. Chair, moving on to number, article number 10. Appropriating funds for survey, engineering, design, and or construction of a portion of Swan Pond Road. We are still, uh, so just as a recap, we appropriated money at the June town meeting to conduct a stormwater evaluation because we were able to provide a fairly accurate estimate of the paving costs, but we were not able to provide an accurate estimate of the required stormwater improvements. We've been going through an approval process with the residents. We have three abutters representing four parcels who we are awaiting approvals on right now, or at least as of this afternoon. One um, has not agreed to indemnify the town uh, for entering its property. One is seeking the relocation of the roadway on, um, on their property, which is not something that was included in the uh, scope that was discussed back in June and May and one um, is refusing preliminary authorization for paving. To give the board a little bit of perspective, it's very difficult for us to ask folks to sign off on um, the providing a final so sign off. I, let me restart that. It's very difficult for us to ask folks in the neighborhood to approve a final sign off for paving because there may be alterations to that based upon the stormwater report that comes back and any other findings in the field. However, we are asking for at least an initial authorization from the residents as we committed to do at town meeting so that everyone is on notice that not only are we preparing to do a study, but we're preparing to potentially pave these parcels. Uh, we have run into some hiccups here that we are attempting to resolve. Uh, we, we had a, 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 we've tried to put our uh, so-called thinking caps on to come up with something that would address the concern, including more explicitly explaining to the residents that th while this is a preliminary authorization, there would be a final authorization required prior to us actually performing construction. We're optimistic that the residents will sign off, but they've not done so at this point in time, and therefore the work has not begun. Therefore, it puts a lot of pressure on us in terms of timing. Uh, I would say, and uh, I don't want to overemphasize it, but I think it's highly unlikely at this point that we're going to be able to complete that stormwater review based upon where we're at right now. Um, uh, even uh, even with the receipt of those three approvals addressing four parcels, it will be a very aggressive timeline. Uh, we're committed to do everything we can to meet it, uh, but um, we are under a very tight timeline with now um, two weeks and soon to be less um, going into town meeting. Um, that doesn't mean that the project can't happen or won't happen, but um, there's a lot of pressure uh, on the timeline right now, and again, I, I think I've been up front with that. I know there's some frustration in, amongst the residents with the length of time it took us to get the right of entry identified, but we have done that and we did begin circulating it in the beginning of September. We, we got a great response from uh, quite a few folks right away responding back, but there are a few out there who will clearly have reservations about the project and um, you know, that, that's a concern for us. Um, we've talked with town council about the issue of indemnification. 
Um, the board has the discretion to waive that requirement. Um, I, I would tell you, I don't think that the DPW director, the engineer, or I would be doing our job if we recommended that because of the, the risk not only of the alteration on the property, but any unforeseen or unintended uh, impact of that development occurring as well. So we, we're not recommending waiving that requirement at this point in time. Uh, the relocation issue that's identified up here, um, you know, the, it may be that there's some sort of reasonable resolution of that issue, but that won't be known right now. Um, we've offered the ability to have a, that, you know, we, we offered to clarify that there would be a secondary approval required before we actually, secondary and more detailed approval required before we actually pay, but again, we've not received that approval. Excuse me, Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Masseri. <coughs> it was several different lots that the road actually goes through. Yes. Right. And you're saying only one has said that they want to move it? Are we talking about something else? Well, one has expressed to us at this stage that they would like the location changed. And it, it is, in, in all, in full disclosure, it is the one that is most impacted by the road. The road yeah, does quite a, that's what I a, a, a curve through the parcel. Yes. 219? Yeah. But where it goes through some of the other parcels, too, it has implications on them. It does. And they have signed off on it? Uh, there are a number that have, yes, absolutely. And I want to recognize Ms. Cravada. I'm not sure she's here this evening. But I know she's done quite a bit to get people to sign off on this in, in short order. So okay. um, it, it's not for lack of effort. I, I know that. But, you know, there are some issues that are out there. And we're trying to work through them. We're trying to be as flexible as reasonably possible to get us there. But the timeline is tight. And the one they're refusing, the, the paving is different from the one who... Yes, this is a, a new one. <coughs> at the very beginning of the stretch of the road. Okay. <coughs> so have the residents on this road <coughs> presented their funding plan to, to you? Um, I, I'm not aware of any information with regard to the funding plan. Um, we've written the article intentionally to provide for any number of scenarios for funding, including a... Um, a betterment or a more likely cost sharing because this is not likely to be a formal betterment project based on everything we've heard from public right. and the board feedback. So I, I don't have any new information on the financing plan, no. Okay. <coughs> Mrs. Minipelli. No. The, the one refusing preliminary authorization, is that the, the, the one refusing preliminary authorization, is that the same lot, the gentleman that came here and spoke against it when we first heard this? The one I, at the very end? I don't believe it is. I believe it's oh, at it's the very different. other oh. end. Of the and what about the one, um, it seems like there's a, there'd be a couple that might have an issue with the zigzag. Yes, that, that's one of the ones that's in question up here relative to the relocation on the property. But isn't that already where it's located? It is. So it's already zigzagging through people's parcels, Correct. right? Correct. That's right. But um, what about the one that is not indemnifying? Which, which parcel is that one? Do you remember? Adjacent to the zigzagging, I believe, further in the road. Anything else? Nope. But that, that's the status as of today. Um, you know, again, I, I understand you know that there's frustration on all sides, but this is where we stand. Well, it's a very challenging project. It's not I have one other question. Is there a dollar amount that you'd be proposing in this article? I, I, so the, one of the challenges is this: we, we were hopeful that the stormwater study would give us an understanding of what that construction component mm -hmm. would be, and we could marry that or add that to what we believe is the relatively known paving costs and then begin to have a serious conversation about funding this. But in the absence of that, it's really difficult for me to make that projection right now. And okay. I don't believe the department has a working estimate it's, it's able to share. So if this information, uh, if the issues aren't resolved, will it be, this be a pass over? I don't know that we'd have any other choice. Okay. At least responsibly. Mrs. Minipel. But so the just I'm just curious on the one that's not indemnifying. Are we doing borings into the parcels? No. So it, there's no. It's not disrupting the. <coughs> it's not. We're not disrupting anything, right? It's their problem. It, it's, no. it, it's it's minimal. Minimal disruption, it might have But I, again, I I do think people are seeing that we are asking them to give that preliminary. To, to signal their support for us paving it really is what we're asking for from all of the residents. And I think that that's causing people to be concerned because maybe they don't want it paved or maybe they're concerned about where the location will be. 
or maybe they're concerned about what the runoff impact might be if it's paved. Those are all valid concerns. Oh, and some of them are probably concerned how much it's going to cost them. Sure, so, absolutely. Yeah. They're going to have to have some share in this, so. Okay. All right. Moving on to Article 11. Um, this would appropriate funds for water system improvements and for acquisition of water system property. And I, I did, a, I think, a pretty thorough preview. I'm sorry. Did you want us to make a, a vote? I'm not sure that we can wait. this evening, Mr. Chairman. That's fine. <coughs> um, through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Article 11, I did do, I think, a pretty thorough review of this article at the last meeting, mm -hmm. but I'll go through it again for the benefit of the public. This article would reappropriate $3 million approved at June Town Meeting to be combined with $3 million from the State Mass Works Infrastructure Grant um, awarded to the town for water system improvements uh, as follows. A water rechlorination um, at or near the town line, uh, Main Street and Central Street. Acquisition of property at or near the town line, that should be on the Main Street corridor. We already have the real property in the town's possession on the Central Street side. Uh, to, to make select recommended water main improvements for long-term planning and growth along the Main Street corridor. Um, this would be a, a combined reauthorization of that $3 million we approved in June town meeting alongside with the state grant funding with the intention of reducing um, the town's portion of the $6 million by the state grant, which is a maximum of $3 million. So we're not increasing what was approved, but we are specifying the purpose in here, particularly that acquisition of property at or near the town line, um, as well as making those long-range water system improvements now rather than putting them off using the state grant funding. Any questions? Thank you. And uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm, I know that uh, the water superintendent met with the finance committee to review these at one point. Now, a lot of this information has developed since that meeting. so. I apologize the timing worked out the way that it did, uh, but hopefully um, th this will at least be somewhat informative and we, I'm sure you have a meeting coming up that we can follow up with. Article 11, this just shows you a map. I'm sorry, apparently when it's blown up, the imaging is not very clear, but it's basically showing the potential water main improvements that we would do along Main Street, along North Street, going over to Lowell Road where we have the development ongoing, and then uh, partially off of uh, North Street going towards the Hillview. Um, it's uh, three different segments that we're, we're evaluating and would potentially address through this project. There'll be a more refined presentation made uh, at the town meeting, and we may be able to provide additional um, detail relative to the components at that point in time, but this is a working estimate right now for budgetary purposes. Okay. Article 12 is a rescission for authorization to borrow. This is largely, if not solely, focused on the MWRA authorizations. Um, we have Article 18 from June of 2016, which was the pump station and Reading North Reading uh, water main designs. Um, the authorization was for $1.1 million. Um, the, balancing, uh, the, the balance excluding the pump station land acquisition would be recovered through the end over IMA. So I believe to the finance director that $365,000 numbers is out of the design number only is that correct what does it reflect both that and the land acquisition the 365 represents the Reading North Reading water main design um, as well as the um, in that 1.1 million was the pump station site um, design oh, as okay. well so it's those three items okay. that represent the 365 great and through you mr. chairman the other two relate to the construction of the uh, pipes and the buy-in of the MWRA, which were done in June and October of 2017. An $8.2 million in borrowing that was authorized for the Reading and North Reading construction to connect to the MWRA, and $7.68 million uh, was an authorization to pay or borrow from the MWRA, $7.68 million for the MWRA buy-in. So these are the rescissions that we talked about back in June once things were clarified with the IMA, which they, of course, have been um, uh, with Andover. We're going through that permitting process right now. Uh, we're very optimistic about that permitting process. There are still steps to follow, but um, clearly we've made, the, from a policy standpoint, the, the decision of the Andover, and this would address the lingering MWRA approvals. Article 13, appropriate funds for planning and design of wastewater collection systems. 
uh, wastewater permitting is out of and it was initiated when we began our MWRA permitting effort back in 2014. Um, so it's happening alongside the uh, water permitting. The next step on the wastewater side would be further evaluation of the Andover, Lawrence, and North Andover wastewater collection system and the evaluation of the phasing of North Reading construction as well as the potential phasing of the financing of this. We've asked Wright Pierce, who's here this evening, to try to come up with a scope that would achieve this. Uh, we believe the working estimate to address both of those components is $200,000 for both components. Um, a lot of the feedback I've gotten in the various forums where I've discussed this, financial planning team included, is that folks really want to get a better understanding of what the financing structure would look like for the project, so we've tried to make sure that that's really included. Um, so this has pushed up the estimate um, just a bit, but uh, we think it's the prudent uh, approach at this point in time in order to keep this project moving. Um, and I, I should note as well that uh, relative to the water and wastewater <laughs> project, um, I, I have remained in communication with the town manager in Andover. Clearly, they are occupied with uh, you know, a significant um, on and, and ongoing emergency in their town, but he has made some time to speak with me with regard to our long-term uh, and short-term plans, and I'll be meeting with him tomorrow in the town of Andover. Um, the request, again, is for $200,000. The board has previously recommended it would be funded out of free cash. And I do have some uh, imagery that I'll go on to here. This, this just shows you the town of Andover and where we believe at this point the improvements need to be made, right from the Lawrence line all the way down to the North Reading line. I believe there's some amount of work to be done up here in Lawrence on a main owned by Andover. Still owned by, owned Still. by Andover, but in Lawrence. But yeah. in Lawrence, if you can understand. Or believe that, but that they Andover owns the main, and so we need to make adjustments to that as well. It's outside of the town of Andover, correct? Um, and it leads to the plant in North Andover. Correct. Can you give me an example of what an improvement would would entail? Uh, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Williamson just to come to the microphone because of mine to speak to that. Again, Rob Williamson, who is our con one, of, one of our consulting engineers on the water and wastewater project. Sure, Mr. Prisco. Um, it could be anything. In, so, in our very preliminary evaluation of their system. We identified um, some, uh, there were some sewer siphons that were undersized that might need to be upgraded to take the additional flow from um, North Reading. Some undersized gravity mains um, that might need upgrading. The, uh, their wastewater pump station is probably slightly undersized and would need to be upgraded. So it's, it's improvements to make to their system to convey the flows that you would be considering adding. So we're not talking a massive amount of you know, street construction tearing up, digging massive lengths of pipe? Well, where the, where the main sewers are traditionally run down the center of the road, so where gravity or force main sewers are where we're identifying that streets <coughs> need to be made. If they are in the streets, yes, there's going to be some roadway um, improvements made in conjunction with that work. Thank you. Yep. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Another uh, image that we've put in here, and um, I, I have to note that we've been looking closely at the scope of the wastewater collection system that was submitted to the uh, state permitting authorities back in 2014, and it's extensive. Um, it, it addresses not only the Main Street corridor and the Martins Pond area and the Concord, uh, Concord Street area, but you see there's a number of different impacts in some of the side neighborhoods as well beyond those areas. Um, including over to the east at the intersection of Park, Winter, and Park Streets, uh, the traffic light there. Um, the, this is a scope that we're going to continue to evaluate, but right now the one pending from a permitting standpoint includes these components um, here. So you see the pond is addressed, obviously. You know, you're talking about both a force main and a gravity main being uh, installed. You know, again, I think everybody's hope and thought is to the extent possible phase all of this. There are some engineering concerns that go along with that because in the end you do need to get a pipe in Main Street that connects to the Andover town line to improvements in Andover that, to carry the effluent. So um, there, there is, you know, some of that we're bound by and restricted by, but the, 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 the thinking is to further advance this uh, through this uh, through this study and this $200,000. <coughs> I think it's fair to note we have a lot of momentum on the, both the water and the wastewater projects, and I think, as you can see, we're really trying to continue that planning effort. Um, I, I need to make it very clear to anybody who's uh, in the audience or watching at home, um, this is not about 
assessing costs uh, at this point in time to anybody in this area. This is merely a, an intention to try to better understand the costs and how we might be able to, to best finance this in the interest of all of the parties involved, both the town uh, and any abutting property owners. Um, it's, again, a planning and very preliminary design effort. Right, and I just want to state that as we collect more information and we get to a certain point, we are going to host workshops and continue to provide information to anybody that would be in these areas so, so they can hear what's going on and continue to keep updating the town as we go through the through the discussion. Absolutely. Okay. We saw a lot of success with that model with both the secondary school building project okay. and of course the water project. Yep. So we'll have multiple workshops. Article 14 is an appropriation of money for special counsel legal expenses. This article would provide additional funding for legal expenses uh, related to the secondary school building project. The article proposes to appropriate $300,000 in free cash for continued legal action. The town has authorized approximately $840,000 to date and approximately $198,000 remains unexpended at this point in time. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, again, the funding source uh, is uh, free cash. A couple of the customary articles, uh, customary slides that we have up there relative to the nature of pending litigation. Um, I think that the hope is to be able to provide a bit further detailed update uh, to the extent that we can possibly at, at town meeting. Um, but again, obviously within the constraints of the fact that we have pending litigation going on. Article 15 would authorize a payment in lieu of taxes agreement. Uh, in August, the board entered into a 20-year payment in lieu of tax agreement with Minuteman Energy Storage LLC. The agreement is contingent upon town meeting approval. Minuteman agreed to pay, pay the town a flat $13,500 every year for 20 years in lieu of taxes on equipment they will install on Reading Municipal Light Department property off of Chestnut Street. The equipment will provide on-site battery storage of approximately five megawatts. Batteries are charged during off-peak hours and are discharged to the grid during periods of high demand. The board is recommended. The board has signed a conditional uh, payment in lieu of tax agreement. Um, this is a, an RMLD-led project at this land. Uh, it is dependent upon a number of different things uh, in order for it to continue, one of which was state grant funding, which it received at the end of calendar year 2017, another of which is this payment in lieu of tax agreement. Um, and I, I think, you know, I won't speak for the board, but I think the thinking was, from a public policy standpoint, there is a potential for some cost savings, but this is really about making the best use of a facility to try to make available um, uh, new technology for battery storage um, that would allow us to have additional uh, capacity available for the grid here in North Reading. Mr. Masseri. Just to add to that, uh, during peak times, uh, Reading Lake, buys electricity from maybe less efficient power plants, things like that. And uh, this would minimize that or reduce it to the point where there's also an environmental impact, a, a good environmental impact on this approach. And in addition to lowering or uh, keeping control of the cost of electricity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Article 16 would authorize the sale of uh, town property and funding for incidental costs uh, for 9 Mill Street. The Board of Selectmen is evaluating subdividing par the parcel into two parcels, one with the house driveway and other associated structures that would be sold, the other to be kept for potential future municipal use. Uh, we have uh, an, engineering, uh, an engineering firm that we are contracted with to do this work. Uh, for us, I, I'm not sure that we're going to have a definitive delineation of where the line would actually be, but this would give the board the authority to um, subdivide and dispose of all or a portion of the parcel. Again, the intention would be to keep the upland portion for potential future municipal use. Um, we've had some discussion relative to this. I, I don't know that we can accurately pinpoint what related costs might go along with this, but my recommendation to the board is that we appropriate $15,000 in water enterprise retained earnings to conclude the subdivision. Again, this would be an asset that was purchased with water department funds. Uh, it would be the water enterprise that would be the beneficiary of any proceeds from a sale. Um, I, at one point, was thinking that this might be something that we could address through the operating budget. And I do, we do have a purchase order open from last year to address this partially, but this would give us additional funding to try to bring it to conclusion. Um, that dollar amount is new. We didn't have it at the last meeting. It's just a, a working assumption. 
this point. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> Article 17 would fund the, over, the Open Space and Recreation Plan consultant. The article would authorize funding to contract with a consultant to update the town's Open Space and Recreation Plan. Um, the cost is $25,000. The plan was last done in 2013 and is due to expire in January of 2020. The plan is required for the town to be eligible for a certain, sorry for the spelling error there, or grammatical error, to be eligible for certain state environmental and open space grant programs. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've looked at you know what the, the, the schedule for this would be. Um, it is not something that we're necessarily in a position to be able to uh, begin immediately. However, um, you know, not knowing um, the challenges we might face at June Town Meeting, um, we didn't want to leave this article to be funded at that point in time necessarily. Um, if we were to fund it in next October's town meeting, it puts too much pressure on us from a timeline standpoint to be able to get the plan done by that January 2020 deadline. Um, so we've been recommending funding it here. Um, from the funding source standpoint right now, I believe it's um, tabulated for free cash. Um, I know there's been some discussion about whether alternative funding sources could be looked at, but right now it's been identified as funded for, from, from free cash. Um, it's something that the Planning Commission has submitted through the town planner would obviously have a lot of involvement from Parks and Recreation based on the existing infrastructure for open space. And I'm going to look to the template. Is that accurate? Is that fairly accurate description of things? Good. Any questions, anyone else? <coughs> Please continue. Moving on to Article 18, funding the feasibility study for the pedestrian uh, slash bicycle pathway. The article would authorize funding for a feasibility study for a proposed pedestrian bicycle pathway. The amount requested is $55,000. I think as the board and the members of the public may be aware, it was on the warrant for the June town meeting. We were unable to fund it at that point in time. It was passed over, referred to this town meeting. Um, the board has determined it would make a recommendation to be uh, at town meeting. I believe in your meeting packet you have information that Selectman Schultz obtained from the Land Utilization Committee um, that with regard to this matter. I'm just going to show a couple of images, and I know Selectman Schultz has some comments he wants to make. And so these, yeah, they're not the clearest picture, but you see the, the I believe I've got the rail bed. Targeting, this looks backwards, though. Huh. Okay, so we're looking at the western portion here. It's west. Yes. Yes. Peter it's Washington. Uh, right, so we're talking somewhere along this area-ish. And then the eastern portion to the Middleton line at Bostick over here, near Bostick, uh, follows along here. Again, you see there are areas where it's um, on a right of way, does traverse private property in particular areas. It goes on street at some areas as well. Um, I know Mr. Hertz was not able to be here this evening, but I know Selectman Schultz has spoken with him. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, I'll defer to Selectman Schultz. Please. <coughs> um, the proposed rail trail would run approximately four miles from the Linfield line to the Wilmington line. It generally follows the path of the old San Lom to Lowell Railroad. It essentially, it almost follows the river for the most part. Um, what would this cost us? Well, there's, a, there's public funding for this. Now, we would have to come up with the feasibility study and also the engineering design. And then the state would pay for the whole construction cost. A lot of this will be built through wetland, be built on boardwalks. Um, what the feasibility study is going to basically tell us is are we able to do this? Uh, what is the best route? Um, if we have some parcels that we cannot get an easement over, uh, what are ways we can reroute around those parcels? Uh, the town is not looking to do anything of eminent domain wise. It's all going to be by easement. Um, and basically the feasibility is gonna, study is going to tell us if we can do this. Um, what this is a little bit different than other feasibility studies that we have in town in the sense that this is one that we don't have to put up the money up front for the construction and then seek reimbursement the state takes over the construction once the design is approved so it's not like we have to front the money and then get reimbursed so if this is feasible and that's what the study will tell us this is a really win <coughs> for the town a um, couple of things that we have what would it be used for be used for uh, jogging biking walking in the winter would be snowshoeing um, we don't propose that it would be uh, plowed in the winter so snowshoers or cross-country skiers could use it um, there is no liability in any landowners who grant an easement based on mass general laws the the recreational use statutes 
Um, we've isolated the parcels that would be affected. Um, there's probably three or four parcels out of the, uh, the ones that we'd have to cross that could be troublesome, and that's what the feasibility study will deal with. Um, I think it's a great idea for the town, uh, only because it's not a feasibility study that we're going to get and then put on the shelf and never use in the sense that we're not going to have to come up with the construction costs. And that that's what makes this a lot different than some of the other studies we've had in town. Um, and that's the report. Uh, Phil Hertz from the LUC has done a ton of work on this. He's shown maps and all that. You know, he's really isolated every parcel that goes across. And it's something I personally think the board should consider. I think it's cost effective. I think to build this, if we, the feasibility study comes back that we can do it, we have to do the design. And then after that, the state pretty much takes over the costs. And again, it's not something we have to put the money up front and then try to get reimbursement on. The state takes over the construction. They get reimbursed from the federal government as well. And that's pretty much it. <coughs> Any questions? I, yes, please come to the podium. Uh, Don Keller, or Three Sands Per Lane. Can you tell us what the design cost will be? I'm looking at notes. I got notes from. Mr. Hertz. I don't have it in his notes, but I believe, oh, I'm sorry, $200,000 to $300,000, but that's a rough estimate pending upon the feasibility study. So, the town has to so in that. addition to the 55, we'd have to spend two to $300,000. Yes, and the well grants may. Before we get any money from. On, on and grants may be available to defray some of that cost. I also understand that about 50% of this path is on private property so we would need some easements and yes do we have any idea of what those easements may cost that's what the feasibility study is going to tell us we don't know at this time and if and the easement cost would not be part of the grant correct so we've got fifty five thousand two to three hundred thousand for design and an unknown amount of money for easement before we do Put a shovel in the ground, yes. But the two to 300000 there may be some grant availability there. We're not sure at this time. You can see the Finance Committee voted against it. Um, mm -hmm. and, the, and we had the presentation, we thank you for that. But um, I think it was the feeling of most of us that this was kind of a nice thing, but uh, a lot of unknown costs, and it's something that we didn't think we could afford to do. There are, there are many things that need to be done in this town. Um, and to put that much money into a, a benefit to a smaller portion of the town um, didn't seem to be make a, an awful lot of sense. So I think, I think when we make the presentation, we ought to probably not just leave with the 55,000, but, but talk about what the potential costs are before we even can apply for a grant. Uh, I agree, because I had the same question of, about the um, <coughs> easements. Uh, it's going to have to be some legal counsel costs associated with pulling all those <coughs> together. And I think if we can get an estimate on that as well to lay I it don't think I think that's one of the purposes of the feasibility study is to determine the, if the easement issues. That's why I don't know if we're going to have that prior to doing the study. Well, we know we're going to have them. Well, we don't need a feasibility study to say we're going to, whether we need them. We know we need them, right? That's a known. I just want to have an estimate on how much money legal counsel would cost us to get an easement through of this type. Should be a very simple question to ask uh, our legal counsel. They should be able to give us this pretty simple answer per easement, roughly what a rough cost would be, um, because we know that's happening. There's no wiggle room around that, right? There's no way to waive an easement. Well, unless somebody, even if somebody donates it, you still have to do the paperwork and yeah. Just, I think it's a, at least we should capture a, a rough estimate. Is on that, that Michael? Is that something you could look into, the town yeah, council? So, so I guess so. So that I'm clear, uh, we're looking to get an understanding of the the, the value of the easement. I mean, no, the no, no. So, so right now, okay. The way it's been described, <coughs> we gotta, we're going to be requested to put up fifty-five thousand dollars for a feasibility study, mm -hmm. and then at the same time. Mr. Schultz brought up about two hundred fifty thousand dollars in uh, what was it? The engineering cost design design study. Design, yes. design yeah. study. So now we're over three hundred thousand, and we haven't even t 
touched upon what the cost would be for these easements. We should probably lay that in there as well. So when we go to town meeting, we can at least be at full disclosure to the community. You know, it's not just $55,000. It's if you approve this, we get through this uh, feasibility study, then we have the design phase, which costs money, and then in addition to 55000 is merely stage one of a right. long process. But yeah. we should be able to give them a rough estimate of what the overall cost is going to be because if people look at this as a huge price tag, it gets closer to, let's just say, a half a million dollars. They may not want to spend the $55,000 because they're not going to approve a half a million dollars to do this bike path, especially when we have a lot of other priorities going on in town. And so also, Mr. Chair, the total construction cost, full disclosure, is going to be around $10 million. That would 100% be paid by the Mass DOT. I understand. Yep. Plus so a large project. Yep. It is. Yes. Mr. Mr. Hertz did an amazing amount of work here, and he's actually listed out the parcels and parcel numbers and owners. And so some of these are, you know, MBTA and well, town of Danvers owns parcels, and some of them are, um, you know, electric company, Richardson's Farm, City of Lynn. I mean, some of these would probably be hard to sort of define a value, although I think MBTA has a specific amount it charges for, you know, per easement or mm -hmm. license. So I think you could probably share that with town council to try to figure out, you know, the, the scope and extent of the work. The value of each easement that we'd be paying for might be something that he might not be able to give us a valuation, but certainly for these 20, uh, at least the 20 parcels that were identified, he might have an idea of what the legal services would be to, to get those. A lot of them are ours, but a lot of them are, he's already said who the owner is, so the work is at least preliminarily done. Mm -hmm. Mr. Masseri, and then Mr. Well, I, was, I was looking for the number of easements that we would have to uh, What's it? Yeah, it's appropriate. Is that the 20? Or well, is there a different number? I, I don't know off the top of my head. You have to look at because a lot of the parcels are town owned. Um, some other towns own them. I mean, yeah, and we own a good chunk of the land too. The easiest part is going to be from IRP to Wilmington. That's a little cleaner. The tricky part is going to get across Havel Street. Um, that's where you. I think it's going to be the hardest part. It goes through North Reading Auto Body. That's going to be one of the tougher parcels. Well, I think it would be uh, helpful. I would like to know how many challenges we're going to. Face by knowing how many easements we're going to have to see. Some may be easy, some may be hard. Well, that's Mr. Hertz thinks there's going to be about three to five that are going to be harder, and the rest of them he thinks are relatively, I'm not going to say easy, but less elbow grease is needed. But we go through this process, we're guaranteed to get the $10 million. To or I don't let Mr. Hertz speak to that. He says yes, but I missed Kilburn. Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, it's a, uh, a, a regional process that's done by the Metropolitan Planning Organization, I believe. I have that right? The title right? <laughs> Thank you. I know most of the acronyms, not all of them. Um, there's a, a, a group, you know, it's, it's stewarded by a leadership group that evaluates projects on an annual basis, and they do, a, I think, a five-year planning process uh, where they advertise the projects that they've selected, they have hearings on it. So there's a pretty extensive process, um, you know, and it, it's fairly public uh, in terms of the approvals. That would be the avenue I think we would be following here through the State Transportation Improvement Program. Um, again, they would fully fund the construction of the project, and it's not a situation where you know, we're being reimbursed. They actually take ownership of the project and construct it, from what I understand. Um, there's a multi-year effort that generally leads up to being considered for that. Um, and I think that's probably one of the arguments that the Land Utilization Committee would offer if they were able to be here this evening, which is, we want to get that process started so that we're in a queue for that long-range planning. But there are clearly steps in between that would need to take place beyond just this study. Um, we should just try to capture those the best we can as we present this in town meeting. That's sure. All. So we could follow up with town council, I guess, to try to understand those okay. easement costs better. Ms. Evans. <coughs> so, Eric Evans, 3 Sandra Lane. So question, does this tie into a network of bike paths like Linfield? I know they've been talking about a path and... That's the, the goal the down the road. The, the, um, it would hopefully tie on the Linfield side, which I think you could go all the way to Georgetown from there. Um, but there's one connection by the Bostic plant and there's a Linfield, I think it's called Linfield Water Authority or there's district. a... District. Yeah. Water, water district, district owns a chunk of land that 
Linfield, I don't know if you followed the news, Linfield's having an issue right now tying into Wakefield. Um, and you could go south too. So I think it is feasible down the road, but we're just looking at it as, yeah, we'd love to link it up somewhere else, but right now let's just get ours in the ground, see if we can do it. But, but it'd be, there's be part a potential of a great, It'd be part of a greater network potentially. And has private funding um, come into board with some of these like feasibility studies and some of the initial costs? Have people raised funds? The, the interested parties would love to see a bike path. Have they, has there been private funding for any of these things in the past where we'd cover some of the costs potentially? Not that I know, but I don't know one way or the other on that. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I will note too, I know that the town planner has had some conversations with uh, some consultants with, as well to, to better understand what the scope will get us. So we'll try to report all that information back to the board <coughs> the evening of town meeting, uh, provide that same information to the finance committee as well uh, for your consideration. Uh, although I think you've already taken your position with regard to it, but we'll get you the information anyway. Okay. Thank you. Article 19. <coughs> Article 19, which is the alteration of layout for the middle high school driveway. Project that needs no introduction at this point. Board of Selectmen acquired 20, 127 square feet of land that was previously part of the house lot at 193 Park Street. That's an acquisition that is expected to be finalized this evening. Excuse me, this week. Um, the parcel has a sidewalk and some traffic control signals, <coughs> traffic signal controls on it. The approval of the article would expand the layout of the existing public way, known as a middle high school driveway, to include this parcel. Um, the board has recommended uh, the parcel. Um, we, again, we expect the taking to be completed, friendly taking to be completed uh, this week. And the board signed the order to lay out, or alter, excuse me, at the last meeting. Article 20, which would amend the general bylaws for snow removal on streets and sidewalks. Uh, this article would authorize the existing general bylaw relative to snow removal to be amended. I just note here the police chief has reported to us 95% compliance in the winter of 27 2018. Um, as of September 17, 2018, there was no amendment proposed uh, by the administration at this point in time. Um, uh, there were a number of discussions, and I, I, I would suspect there'll be either discussion under this article or the next one. I see there are members of the business community here. I'll defer to the board or however you want to manage that. Now is as good a time as any. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carucci, if you wouldn't mind, uh, sir, either coming up here to the desk and sitting down or to the podium, <coughs> whatever is more comfortable for you, sir. You can see me over the podium? I absolutely no. can. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm back from what two weeks ago. Could you state the name? Uh, Charles you? Carucci, Three Chester Street, Thank you, sir. who lives on the corner of Main Street and Chester. Also owns a business at 290 Main Street. Uh, we were hoping the selectmen would take this off to help the small business people in the town. And one of the big reasons is that it becomes a liability for the small business. If anything happens, we're out there touching that sidewalk. We're responsible. As I told you last time, I did have a problem. I'll go through that again. We also think the town could do a better job of maintaining the sidewalks. They have the equipment. They have the main manpower. Uh, the other thing while I'm up here I'm looking at that 55,000 that was back on the last, uh, last article, and I was wondering if the selectmen may consider trying to do something on North Main Street with a feasibility study for sidewalks. If there's money out there from the state, you're talking there's $10 million to do a bike path, there's got to be some money out there to do the sidewalks. That's all I'm asking. <coughs> and I really would like you to consider helping out the small business community. Thank you. So Mr. Carucci, I'll, I'll just state what I said last time is, you know, you say that the town has the equipment and the resources, and I'm disagreeing with you 100%, and the, the DPW director is here as well. And one of the largest challenges we're having right now for our 
coming upcoming snow season is identifying the resources to plow our own streets and sidewalks that we already have responsibility for you know there's not as many contractors as there once was in that evening that you were here last we approved an increase in our rates to try to attract even more contractors and i'm not so sure we've had quite the response yet that we were hoping but we have a resource problem yes you're not wrong about the equipment we have it but we have a resource problem and i know i could tell you from my own self when we have a resource problem and we can't address our streets that's going to be my priority and not not these sidewalks on route 28 because right now the responsibility lies with the businesses and that's where it needs to be right now we have a responsibility for the safety of the town and we need to focus on that if we had an abundance amount of resources, we'd be having a different discussion, but <coughs> the resources don't exist just based on, did I say anything wrong, no. Mr. Daly? Thank you. So if, if you want to add to that or you don't feel, don't feel like you have to, but. No, I would just, I would, I would agree with you. It's, that's exactly what, uh, what the problem is. It's a, it's a matter of resources and it's the nature of, um, it's not a residential street with a, a quiet sidewalk uh, that meanders through. This is a, a busy, um, you know, four lanes of highway that ends up, um, it's, it's plowed by the state, so I have no control of when and how that's done. So I would, I would be constantly, or I would have to dedicate resources to that, to that effort uh, exclusively from the start of the storm, practically uh, right on straight through to the end, just to ensure that it was cleared if it, if it was our responsibility. So we can get into a long discussion on this, but I think you, it seems like the business community's made up their mind. It's sad that we couldn't come up with a sort of a happy medium on this discussion. And I really think it's really in the hands of the voters that come to town meeting. You have to decide. If you don't want to hold the businesses accountable to plow the sidewalks, then we won't have plowed sidewalks on Route 28. I mean, it's really up to the voters of the town to make this decision. I mean, we haven't voted and made a recommendation yet, and I know we will at some point, but I'm, I am sad to hear that we didn't come to any kind of Mr. Schultz. <coughs> yeah, I would recommend, I hear w what our DPW director is saying. We don't have the manpower to, do, when we say resources, I think we're talking about manpower to actually, we have the machinery to do it. We don't have the person to run the machine um, is the issue. I would suggest to the business community, I'm just kind of throwing it out there, that you you change your, your article to show the town will do it, but maybe it starts the winter of 19, which gives DPW a year to get the manpower in place. As much as I think the town should do it, and I've been on record on that throughout, I agree with the DPW. This year, we don't have the manpower. But there's no reason why within, you know, the snow's not going to fly until like December or so. There's no reason why in 14 months we can't have the manpower. So I would encourage you guys to think about maybe keep your article on, but have an effective date of the next winter, which to me would be a win-win for everybody. But again, I'm one of five up here. And, um, I do think it is a lot to ask the business community. They're getting two lanes of slush and heavy salted treated snow that if you don't get it off in the first 10 minutes, turns into a rock pile. You know, the town does have the equipment to, to, to attack that. Most business owners don't. There was one lady, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know your name in the back. I think you were at the last meeting. Yeah. You said it, you spent $3,000 last year just for your sidewalk. Yeah. Well, I think that's something, I mean, Reading and Andover both do the sidewalks in their commercial areas. I think we should do it, but I don't see how we can do it this winter. I just want to be honest about that. I do want to respect our new DBW director, and they just don't have the manpower this winter. But I would, I would be open to having a bylaw change, but it wouldn't take effect for a year. Uh, I throw that out there. Okay. The thing is that business community is willing to work with the town. You know, we're part of the town. It's the same as you gentlemen and lady. You have a business that are in the town, and we want to work with the town. So if that's a solution. It's very possible I think we could live with that with a long-range plan as long as we see some effort into a long-range plan. We think it's a good idea, or at least I do. I don't know about the rest of the business community. All right. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coach. Pat Lee, 22 Aspen Road. Um, well, dynamics have changed here in the last couple of minutes uh, with a another suggestion. I think the point that was brought out earlier is the difficulty of maintaining a sidewalk that is right on the street, two lanes of stuff being thrown on the sidewalk, and it becomes quite difficult for an individual business to try to maintain that. 
um, same as was stated earlier. So some assistance, some working with the town to try to come up with a safe answer. And I think that's the priority that everybody in this room has, is want safe sidewalks. And I don't know if the business can, community can provide that with individuals out there trying to maintain those sidewalks. Um, I'm happy to hear that there was a 95% compliance last year. I think the business community showed in that respect that they're trying to do their best. But um, personally speaking, by kind of keeping an eye on it, I don't think we did a very good job of doing it. We tried, but these conditions sometimes make it difficult for individuals to do that. So the proposal out there is to wait a year. Well, that's just I can't. My I, I understand, and, I, yeah. and my feel. It. My feeling is, I think, as people here representing a number of businesses here in town, you may not see a lot of businesses here tonight, but there are a number of businesses that are quite concerned about this issue. Um, and I think, as we'll say, representatives here tonight, we'll bring that back to talk to the business community and see what we can do to um, convince them that that's a good, reasonable solution towards it. Um, I think the other thing we need to do is take a look at maybe redistributing priorities in the community. Do, are we doing sidewalks that are even getting uh, foot traffic? If Main Street has become a high priority to us, then maybe it should get closer to the top of the list of making safe sidewalks through town. So um, all that being said, I like the suggestion that was made. We do want to work with the town in trying to come up with a compromise that we all can live with and create safe sidewalks for those few that do walk the sidewalks here in the community. And maybe at some point in time we have sidewalks that go from Andover to, to Reading on one side of the street or the other, maybe both. But um, hopefully we can get this done and work together on it. Thank you. Well, again, I'll just state for the record. I don't agree with Mr. Schultz's recommendation only because we've heard from the DPW director. We don't have the manpower or the resources to do it. And, and in resources, including money. So, I mean, we could say a year, you could say two years. I don't think it's going to change. You know, the people that want to do this work are not out there like they used to be. And the money for us to do it does not exist. So, you know, again, we're at a point where we have a bylaw. I think we're at a crossroad where you just leave it up to the voters to make the decision. I think that's where we're at. If the voters decide they want to scrap the bylaw, then we scrap the bylaw. If the voters come to the town meeting and they say, no, we don't want to scrap the bylaw, then the, the businesses have to live by it. I think that's where we're at. Um, you know, we're here trying to run the town the best we can, but we're not gonna, I can't, I wouldn't be comfortable making a commitment even a year from now that we're gonna go back to town meeting and come up with tens of thousands of dollars today in our budget to plow sidewalks that we don't plow today. Um, and especially when we probably don't even have the individuals of the manpower to do the work. So that's where I stand on this. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation. And uh, that's the best I can say. So I don't know if any of the board members wanna chime in at this point, but we've been dealing with this since I've been on the board. And we're gonna continue to deal with it every year until we fix it. Well, Let's yeah. tell, let, right now we have a bylaw. Mr. Macera. I, I think uh, we could spend, if we want to keep this going, right, for right. every meeting from now until God knows when. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think a good part of the problem is related to the sidewalks themselves. There is no consistent sidewalk structure. There's things in the way. Uh, it makes it extremely difficult to to even manage the situation. The state is plowing two lanes per side on, on those sidewalks that exist. Uh, and, and to me, that's the problem, right? And uh, I think I'd rather see us put money into coming up, even if it's a long range plan. We talk about the development of Route 28 and Concord Street. And I think we have to look at it as the whole picture and say, gee, uh, maybe we need to do A, B, and C with respect to sidewalks and then 
<clears throat> I'm not against the town plowing the sidewalks, but right now I, it's a it's a mess. And uh, I, you know, I, I do agree that it could be a resource issue because you know if you have a light storm, they finish the roads, they finish the sidewalks for the school department, and two days later maybe they can get to the sidewalks on the town along uh, Route 120, uh, Route 28. But if you have a big snowstorm. They may spend four or five days trying to get the town squared away with the resources we have. So, you know, and I, and I know the business owners, from their perspective, when we have a big storm, then it really becomes difficult for them to, to keep it clear. And then, you know, I, I drive up the road after the town has plowed the uh, sidewalks for the school, you know, and depending on the kind of weather we have, next thing you know, it's a pile of ice, and there's still poles in the way. I mean, you know, I think we have an overall town problem related to the clearing of sidewalks. So I guess I'm not necessarily against delaying as proposed by uh, Selectman Schultz <coughs> and see, it gives us a little more time to see if we can make some further inroads on what to do. But, you know, as a board, uh, we, we talk about a lot of things and we only have so much money and we have an obligation to prioritize them and determine what uh, what we think is going to be in the best interest of the entire community. And we go through this with our strategic plan every year and that's coming up shortly. Yeah. Right? And you know, maybe we need to talk about that again and during our strategic plan. I think it's a great to suggestion. Or not but we want to put town resources into it. Yeah, but I we've been dealing with the subject forever and I think it's we're at a crossroad but, now. But you know, I do know that the uh, that article was passed a long time ago, and boards back then just ignored the whole thing until I think it was Mr. Yule came on the board, and him being a walker and a jogger started to say, how come we're not enforcing this bylaw? And he was so, right in terms of there's a bylaw in place, and we're obligated to enforce it. And he was right. But so we're because of that, if we're not willing to deal with it, and uh, we, uh, we listen to our business owners who say they can't deal with it, then we have to make a decision. Well, I, and I don't think I like we the do. idea of putting a delay and, uh, and then putting some effort into seeing if we can come up with a fix. And if we can't come up with a fix, then we make a decision to keep enforcing our business owners to uh, clear, the, clear the locks or find a way of letting the town take care of it. Or we just let the people in town decide what they want. If they want a walking community in the wintertime down Route 28, then come to town meeting and vote against scrapping the bylaw. If they don't care, then let the businesses prevail at town meeting and scrap the bylaw. I'm, I'm okay with it either way. Um, you know, because I have other things, other priorities that we need to focus on here in the board. I just think this is a, a it's a heading check for the community. What do you want? Do you want to walk down Route 28 in the wintertime or you don't? This is no, your that's opportunity. That's not the issue. The issue is who's going to do it. Well, no one's saying it shouldn't be done. The question is, does the town do it or the business do it? Two different questions. It's, so let's make no, sure it's we, not. Right it now is. we have a bylaw to do it. If we don't want to do it, the, the town should do the, it if the bylaw is stricken. Yeah. Well, let no the, no the, one's let, advocating. Let's not. Let, no, no, let's let be the honest, taxpayers. Though. No one's advocating that the sidewalks not be plowed. No one's saying that. I am. Well, you're the only one then. I am because yeah. we're because we keep on fighting with this thing. What does the public want? Do they want them done or not? Right now, we have a bylaw that allows them to be done. No, no. no. Does the public want the town to do it or the businesses to do it? That's the question. I don't see a bylaw you know up right? here. We have a that. clerk that's trying to record what's yeah. going on here. So when we're doing this dialogue back and forth, yeah. it makes it really difficult for her to record. She doesn't have to record. Happening. It's a pretty. It's a summary. Yeah, we all know the supposed to be yeah. But, but I can't hear you talking oh. over each other either. So that's fine. We can move on. But you can you can put up another um, you know next town meeting. There should be a bylaw in here and make that. Well, I think there's some people that still want to speak on the issue. So Eric Evans again, three Sandra Lane. So <clears throat> you know I, I've been involved in this for a year now, and I just you know trying to find that middle ground. Like what is what's the middle ground? And I think um, I think we're almost to that point where we could the, the middle ground is delaying it and seeing what's possible. Um, because until this point, 
you know, it's just either you guys do it or you guys do it. I mean, there's, I'm trying to find that middle ground, and, and I don't know where it is. I'd like, I'd like to find it. I, I'd like to even have a proposed where the middle ground is. But I think what we've come up with the business community and the, the, the fellow members that are here, um, I think by delaying it and working with the town, you know, over this next year to figure out what, you know, how hard is this job? You know, who can do it? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's at least finding some middle ground. But if it's just going to be, that, you know, shove it to one side or the other, that's, that's, not, that's not working together. So I, I think there's a compromise here. I think by delaying it a year, seeing what we could do this year, um, you know, the manpower situation, I don't think that's permanent for the next 20 years. I think that's right now. You know, economy changes. You know, there might be more people out there looking for work. Um, so I, I think we have to be long term on this thing, not just what's going on right there at this moment. The other issue I just want to bring up is the town, the town does a lot of sidewalks, which, you know, may or may not be necessary. It might be, you know, if you stop doing one sidewalk, you might have some residents complain that, hey, my sidewalk's not being plowed, which is understandable, but at the same time, you know, what's the master plan for sidewalks? Th that's a big thing. If, if 28's a big priority and it has to be done for public safety, maybe that's a lot more important than, you know, down at the end of 62. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. <coughs> just to remind everyone, we delayed this a year already, right? Uh, one town meeting, six, six months. No, we keep talking about this. Well, we passed over the article. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, um, Susan Lucerko O'Neill, 246 Main Street, North Reading. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody understands, no one's saying that the sidewalks shouldn't be plowed. We want a safe town too. It's um, the bringing together of a community. Um, my big issue is I don't have the proper equipment to do that sidewalk, so I'm outsourcing it, and every time I outsource it, more stuff gets dropped on. That's number one. Number two, I really think it's unfair to ask the business communities not only to plow it, but to assume the responsibility that, God forbid, someone gets hurt, and now they're suing us. Um, I don't want to see anybody get sued. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. But that's a big, that's a big thing. Um, just something to think about. I know we're going to town, town meeting and all this is going to be brought up again. The other thing is, I just have a question. You guys said something about, um, in a couple of articles ago, you said something about um, public easements. Um, why are the sidewalks not a public easement? I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just trying to understand. Mr. Gilberto. So, so the sidewalks are, uh, I believe, nearly universally in the state layout of Route 28. So they are part of the public way, owned by and maintained by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay, so why aren't they plowing the sidewalks? Our understanding from conversations with both the uh, state officials as well as our legislative representation is that <coughs> from a policy standpoint, the state does not plow state sidewalks. Okay. And so they leave it up to the towns. Because I have called the State Department and I can't get an answer. They, they um, the State it. Highway Division. I can't get an answer. I even called um, Mr. Jones. And he, you know, he said the same thing that you guys did. This has been on there forever. and. Um, but I just, I can't get an answer. So I didn't understand, and I'm sure a lot of other people don't understand. We'll be able to talk about this um, on the 15th, correct? When the yeah. town votes? Through you, Mr. Chairman, yes. yes. This is a Warren article uh, for which the moderator may choose to represent folks to present the article and to speak on it as well. Okay, thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Mr. O'Leary, you had your hand up. I did, but I do, okay. You good? I, no, I'm not good. Uh, things are not good. Now, again, this has been a long-standing issue. And to the chairman's point, I mean, we have a bylaw on the books that we have an obligation to enforce, which was brought to a head several years ago, and now we have 95% compliance. So that's a, a wonderful thing, I guess. And uh, the town decided a few years back that they wanted to put the responsibility of clearing the sidewalks on Route 28 onto the business people. And I don't remember what year that was. 2002. 2002. Okay, 16 years ago. Um, so a determination was made. That can be changed, but it can only be changed by town meeting. And your proposal offers to make that change. So to the chairman's point, town meeting can, can make that decision. Um, this board has to make a determination as to how important and where does it fall in relation to prioritization of 
uh, funds and resources to address the situation. Everybody wants to, you know, I hear from, from people, you know, in the neighborhoods that, that do walk 28 and want to continue to walk on uh, 28 and walk to the, uh, some people live in the neighborhood and work at Walmart, um, you know, that want to have the ability to do it safely. Um, and still complain, even with 95% compliance, they still complain about the conditions uh, over the last, uh, last few seasons. And, you know, the solution that we have right now is the bylaw. Um, but there is a, a hardship, certainly, a financial hardship and a practical hardship as far as being able to comply with this bylaw, you know, on the business owner's part. So we as a board, I think, have to determine status quo, leave it alone, and let the public decide, you know, or are we going to take on the responsibility with the proposal that's being put forth here and I guess they need some clarification. Are you proposing that during this current season, our DPW, on occasion when they can do it, run up and down 28? No. Or just wait? I think we have to give our, in fairness, I think we have to give our DPW time to staff up. We have the equipment. We don't have the manpower. And so well, I, my, I, I'm my, just trying to find a, a medium here that, you know. Okay, my, my understanding is, you know, during a light storm, we might be able to take care of this. You know? Yeah, and I think, speak with Mr. Bowers in the past, I don't think this issue is not at all over a three-inch storm. It's over a long-duration storm, a heavy storm, a back-to-back -back storm. That's where the issue right. lies. So, so to me, if this is going to be a, a wait and see, and a try, in other words, if we put this on hold for a year, to me, that's a commitment on this board's part that we're making on the administration's part to address the situation through the town budget. And I don't think, I don't think I'm at that point yet. You know, if that's the case, yeah can't do it this year, but don't let them off the hook and, you know, let, uh, hopefully there's some compliance here, or same level of compliance. You know, either we're going to take it on as a community, you know, or we're not. You know, and we're not in a position, it doesn't sound like, you know, to gear up as far as uh, resource-wise. We're not talking about hiring seasonal help, you know, mm -hmm. snow shovelers. Right. We're talking about hiring personnel that we're going to use 12 months a year, 52 weeks out of the year. And if there isn't a demand for that, you don't gear up for how much snow we're going to you know, read the Farmer's Almanac and keep your fingers crossed and hope they're right. You know, so it, it's, it's hard. It's and hard. again, as far as contractors go, we're having a difficult time getting contractors to assist us in the snow removal process. You know, can there be a reprioritization of our resources in relation to clearing and sending the sidewalk plow out? You know, I'd have to defer to the DPW director and say, okay, instead of doing one section of town in the order that we're doing it now, and if Route 28 is a priority to the board, you know, fine. We'll send the resources here first, and that neighborhood gets taken care of, or that end of 62, or, you know, wherever, you know, North Street gets done later. But I don't know. You know, and how, how much good is that going to do? Because when the big storms come, it's not just the sidewalk plow. It's front end loaders. It's heavy equipment, it's eight wheelers, 12 wheelers to haul this stuff away. So, um, you know, I, I can't make the commitment of waiting a year and misleading them to the point where right. yeah. it's not gonna happen. I think they're down three bodies right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not just yeah. the three bodies, it's more than three bodies. So again, you know, we have to, as a board, have to determine whether or not the priority of getting Route 28 cleared in a reasonable fashion, in a reasonable time period, uh, with a reasonable amount of compliance, whether it be by the business owners of the town, is feasible and economically what's it going to cost all the taxpayers to get this done you know if or do we leave it to the town meeting and say you know what in their eyes it isn't the priority that it used to be and uh, go ahead and scrap it and then we'll have to address it anyway right because the compliance part is then going to be off the table the fines and all the threats that go along right. with it will be off the table and then we will have to determine what are we going to do about it? And maybe we match it up to our wastewater plan that we have with yeah. construction potential. You know, we tie oh, no, it all I, in I there. I mean, they, yeah, that's down the, the road. Sidewalks. If we do the wastewater, you know, you got to tear it up Route 28, you got to put it in your sidewalks. No doubt about it. But, you know, <coughs> that's, makes sense. But that's a decade down the road. But, more. but I know, but it's a long term plan. So, to. Huh? I know it's not that long. <laughs> I know, and I didn't have any gray hair when I first started. You know, so, you know, to me, I don't think the chairman's all wrong in relation to where are we at right now. I don't want to make a false promise and put this on the year and not, be able to and not be able to deliver. You know, now, do we as a board want to say, you know what, 
we want to take the burden off of them, side with them, and do away with the bylaw. Do we want to do that or not? You know, I do. Or status quo and let the voters decide. To me, we can't commit the resources, and I think it's a false sense of uh, security of promise that we're making if we even put it off for a year. Because I don't believe I can sit here from a priority standpoint right now, knowing the resources we have, to gear up to do snow removal on sidewalks on Route 28 with the DPW. I'm not there yet. And without a comprehensive um, plan as to whether or not that he can uh, realign the prioritization of, of doing sidewalks and then heavy snow removal, where do we go first? Right. I mean, right now we're not doing Route 28 too much. You know, we're not. So, and it was a huge undertaking in 2015 uh, when we had those storms. I mean, we had front end loaders and 18 wheelers hauling snow away. So Sorry, Mrs. Minipelli, please. I, I was <clears throat> think I know we've already postponed this months and months and months, and we've talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. But what about some sort of a meeting in the middle? Was there any type of discussion about? you know, perhaps sharing or pooling resources to hire a contractor that specifically does that. We're saying we don't have the manpower, we don't have the resources, so obviously that's financial, but is there the availability of a contractor that, that the owners and the town could hire just for that specific purpose of clearing off with the equipment that's needed? Because, you know, I can compare it to my business. <coughs> which happens to be a building Mr. Hall built, but I don't have huge um, four-lane roadway that keeps getting plowed into the side. We pay for it. Mm -hmm. I'm in Reading, and we do pay for it. We hire a contractor to clear out our building through our, you know, through our dues in the, in the condo units, but we don't, we don't get it done by the town in Reading. They might do that one specific section of Main Street, but I think that's... They do 28, that's it. <laughs> right, they don't do where my building is. Right. We're, we're responsible for clearing our sidewalks, which is a corner. But what about something like that? I mean, where you have to hire a specific... You're hiring contractors anyway to assist with the work because it's round-the-clock operation, and it's a round-the-clock operation for all the public safety officials. But what about... Is there someone available that might just be able to handle that particular task? That there might be some sort of a contribution from the business owners put into something of the nature of an enterprise that we hold for that just that specific purpose. Mm -hmm. We we did have a discussion along those lines, you know, a few a few times, and there's a number of different pitfalls that you know I you probably don't want me to get into right now. I guess really the only way to to determine if there's a contractor available and willing to do that is to is to go out to bid for that. The relationship, if, I think uh, sharing the responsibility uh, to finance that I think becomes very difficult if we're sharing that with a number of different business owners. I think that becomes overly complicated and cumbersome. But um, So we did, we did touch on that. We had a number of di different discussions along those lines and we just never seemed to find um, a really good solution to that. So we did sort of touch on that. We have all these business owners here. We've seen them over and over again. On the flip side of that, we've seen the residents that do use the sidewalks. You know, and I, it would seem, it, it would stand to reason, maybe we should, for that one specific task, put it out to bid and see what the cost would be. It's probably a lot cheaper than 30 people paying $3,000 each. Mm. And and they have they come with their own insurance because they wouldn't be able to get a contract with us without their own insurance to do the work mm -hmm. and that would be it i mean it's utilizing resources that you might otherwise be using for other work that you need to get done but what about what about doing that and would the business owners be willing to do an annual fee in towards that or something until we can figure out long-term sidewalks or yeah. road road work I think it was touched on a few times about the difficulties we've had in years past, just attracting con contractors to do just our, you know, our, regu our, you know, our regular plowing. Um, you know, we're in competition with Mass DOT on the highway, who pays very well. We're in competition with all the communities around us um, to, to get those contractors in. <coughs> to have someone specific to that, I think, would be difficult. It's a bit of a stretch, I think. Um, but I, I, I get it. I get where you're coming from. It's a, trying to be creative and 
find a solution. Mr. Hall. Thank you. Uh, part of the problem is I, I recognize some areas, like from Nick O'Brien's to uh, Firestone, there's a vacant land. Uh, from Francis Street to Cap the new Captain Pizza location is vacant land. That needs to be addressed as well. So I, I think it's part of the, my thing is safety. So the, the, the frontage owners are going to do their thing, and then they're going to leave the rest. So as far as public safety goes, walking around that is more dangerous in the street than it is. It needs to be one, one company, one municipality, it can't be, in my opinion, a whole bunch of individuals, one's got a snowblower, one's got a Jeep plow on it, one's got a uh, shovel, and and uh, it, it's it's a big mess. And then the state comes by and plows them in again. So I think that uh, this is a real serious problem on Main Street. And um, it needs, I think it needs to be handled by one group or one municipality uh, in, in the name of safety alone. So. It doesn't sound like it's snow plow work. It sounds like it's heavy equipment work. So it's, snow plow is not going to be able to cut it. Parking lots get plowed by private contractors, but they can't go maintaining the sidewalks all the time either. And then they're not going to plow the, the no man land in between the side and the businesses. So that's, that's always going to stay slush or snow or ice or whatever. So you're defeating the purpose if it's a dash dot, dash dot, dash dot sidewalk, my opinion. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. Um, I would ask the business community, even I do support your efforts personally, but I, I, I can't support them for this year. Right now you have a motion at town meeting that says you just want to scrap the bylaw, which would be immediately. Uh, of course, it would take some time for the AG's to office to approve any bylaw change, but please let us know if you are going to amend that, what you have on for town meeting, because I can't support it as it's written right now, and I do support your efforts overall. Secondly, about the dash dot sidewalk, uh, Mr. Bowers, I believe you are putting us in the queue with the state to address the sidewalk issue? Well, we had approached the state to find out where we, where we were in the queue as far as a, a redevelopment of, uh, of Route 28. We do have some projects that are coming up. We know that we're not in the five-year plan, so it will be at least five years before we're even on the, in the queue. But we are standing in line, though? <laughs> sort of? Sort of, <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to jump in line too quickly because we have some pretty major, some yeah. pretty significant and important projects. So. Question? Yeah. yeah. Is this a two-thirds vote or a majority vote? Simple majority. Simple for a general bylaw. Majority, right? General bylaw, simple majority, zoning is two-thirds. Any other questions on this subject? Uh, will we find out from the board their uh, recommendation on this before the town meeting? Probably not. <laughs> Probably, Probably not until that, that night. You know, and depending upon what's going to be proposed. Right? We kind of need to know what your final proposal is, and we're going to meet before the meeting, so we would probably make a recommendation one way or the other. At so would you need us all here to? No, yeah. no. We just need to know what you're going to go forward on. Do you know who's going to be making your motion? Uh, we may need some assistance as far as I mean, you, you call the town administrator. You know who's going to be making the motion on behalf of the citizens' petition? Mr. Lee is okay, so he's going to make a motion. There'll be a second, and then it's open for discussion. So, whatever that motion is going to be, should be presented to the board prior prior to yeah, the town yeah. meeting. We have a meeting at what six o'clock, five thirty or six. Uh, we haven't decided yet. Okay, but it, we have a meeting at least at 6 o'clock um, prior to town meeting, and you should come and say, this is what our proposal is going to be because we're, going, we, we're not going to make a recommendation until town meeting because we don't know what you're proposing. Truly don't know yet until you make that. Borrow. So I do think we should review the proposal because th there may be some unintended consequences in the way it was written. I think I've heard that from, maybe from you, Mr. Evans. The way it's written right now, not only would it relieve the, uh, pro the tenant occupant or, or owner of re non-residential property of the requirement to remove snow from the sidewalk, but also the requirement that they prevent snow and ice from sliding off of their roof onto the street or sidewalk, um, and that uh, this prohibition that we have for placing snow and ice back into a street or a sidewalk that has already been cleared or plowed for travel, I, I don't think that that was the intention. So. 
Yeah, so we can we certainly assist to the extent uh, you're interested in doing that, but I know that wasn't necessarily the intention. Mrs. Mendevilli. Um, also, if you, I know there was a lot of talk about n it not being a t continu continuous or contiguous sidewalks, and I think there's a requirement, I forget what it is, a uh, rule to get visual presentation to the town m moderator and town clerk. Yes, for the for water registrar. review, I think, prior well, to the meeting, it, or is this some sort of rule or something? It's a request, it's, it's a not requ a requirement. Not a requirement, we went okay. through this before. Yeah, well, it'd be a good idea, just oh, so if he has can. a heads but up. Don't yeah. feel, you know, it's not the end yeah. of the world if you don't. If you have a drone, and you comply with the drone bylaw, <laughs> that would be a great visual so presentation for people I, to I'd see. like to wrap this up if we could. And I, you know, again, I want to encourage the community to come out on this discussion because I don't think we're going to solve it up here, these us five individuals. We need to hear from the community on this subject and what they want for their community. And that's the bottom line on this. <clears throat> Next, um, we are 22, Article 22. Article 22 is a citizen's petition that would change the name of Bonpell Drive to Brian's Way. The article seeks to name, to change the name as is described here. Town Council has informed the board uh, and I that a vote of town meeting would be advisory and non-binding in nature, advisory to the Board of Selectmen who are authorized under state law to make such a name change. We also have a local bylaw relative to the naming of town facilities. However, we have an opinion that it does not apply. We're requiring town meeting action for the naming of facilities. It does not apply in the instance of um, public ways. Um, Mr. Chairman, you and I have met with uh, the petitioner and his family. We thank them for their, uh, um, their, uh, uh, their participation. We met with them last week and this week uh, to discuss any potential alternatives that they might be willing to consider other than making a straight name change. I think today the family came to the conclusion and, and informed us that they uh, wish to proceed with changing the name. I've informed them that um, this is an informational hearing on the warrant article. It would be followed by action at town meeting, but I didn't know what the board's recommendation would be at town meeting, but even after that recommendation is made, town meeting would need to vote, and even if town meeting were to vote in favor, it would end up coming back to the board for some sort of a hearing where we would notify the abutters, two of them are family members of the petitioner, and there's a third who we are told is supportive, but we would invite them to a hearing to, to discuss uh, that potential change. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, you had asked that we do some investigation as to the uh, cost in terms of time and effort to the town to make this change. I think that we've come to the conclusion that uh, there would be some effort that would be required, but the actual cost, the number of hours, is fairly minimal to, uh, for us to do this, and it's not something that I think we could um, reasonably expect the town to be compensated by the petitioner for. We did highlight and learn, though, that there was a significant impact on the property owners, yes. I mean, whether it's a changing um, uh, at, the, at the registry or the naming of their street, all of the notifications for anybody that they receive mail from as well taking place. We can do that on our end internally. We can notify the Postal Service that the change has been made with our mapping. Um, there may be a delay in the delivery of mail, but those all are potential uh, impacts um, and I know that um, one of the petitioners is here um, sir I don't know if maybe you want to come up and just do a just a brief description <coughs> of the family know I think the board knows the uh, the background and, and also if you Same could clarify if that is the name that you want it to reflect um, well because I, I know there's a question about that too I think right I think you said the post office has a problem with the problem with the apostrophe yeah, yeah, we've, been, we've been told that they may not include it uh, in any formal uh, name. Right. Well, can, you I mean, uh, can you introduce yourself in your street for the folks at home? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, anyways, <coughs> in 92, we built the road. So, just in, can you introduce your, now, your, your full name and your address? Oh, okay. Robert Pellegrino, 3 Bon Pellegrino Drive, North Redden. Thank you. Okay, so in 92, myself and my brother-in-law built the road, and so we just took, I think there was a Sunset Street already or something in the town, so we just took the first three letters of his last name, B-O-N, and the first three letters of ours, P-E-L, so it's Bonpel, 
uh, 2016, July 19th, uh, my grandson Brian was uh, killed in an auto accident in Methuen. And uh, it's been very hard, especially for my wife, because uh, in 2013, uh, my son and the mother separated. So we had Brian with us from 2013 to November 2015. He was with us three days a week, so we'd have him Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And sometimes we'd have him an extra day or two, depending. She was going to school, if she had things to do. And uh, after the divorce was finalized at the end of 2015, then it changed to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I'd pick him up after preschool in Andover, or Lawrence, I should say. And uh, he was with us. So he was, uh, that was my second chance at fatherhood. So I, I think I did, a, I was a little bit better with him. And to, to me and my wife, he was a grandson and a son. And I mean, he spent so much time with us. Sundays we went to church. I would take him out to the park. I uh, uh, can't think of it. <laughs> Every Saturday morning, then uh, Saturday afternoon, I'd give him a bath as soon as we got home, and then we sit down and watch a movie. So I used to DVR all the old uh, uh, movies. He liked the horror movies, like uh, <clears throat> Frankenstein and all the old 30s and 40s, and we'd watch those make popcorn. And so, I mean, uh, so a lot of times he would just him and I would be playing in the family room and then he would yell and he said, Mommy, can you make me some pastina? And then she came in and said, I'm not your mommy. Oh, I made a mistake. So uh, my wife was, has been devastated ever since then. I tell her she should seek help, but she's crying all the time because we just spent so much time with him. You know, and he wasn't, he was disciplined, but not hit and that's what he said uh, how come you never hit me I remember he says, well, because we love you that's why I remember he had a ball and I said don't play with the ball in the house and he went in the kitchen and he threw the ball and it broke the center piece and he just froze and I think he was just waiting for the good old beating and I just picked him up and moved him out of the way and he liked to walk with no sh no slippers or anything and my his grandmother said you better put your slippers on because I don't think we picked up all the glass. And that was it. It was just a second chance and we adored him. And so at the end, his memory, we just like to keep it alive forever. I read name in the street. And that's it. I mean, if the board doesn't, uh, we'll go with the second part of, I think, my wife, is uh, we prefer a rename in the street. There's only three houses. We live in one. His aunt lives in the second one, and then there's a new neighbor. So I've co I think the only real expense of an our part, other than time, is uh, the deed. And I have a call to the attorney. I even forget his name, but he's up here on uh, 280 Main Street to find out what the approximate cost would be just to redo the deed. Other than that, it's just changing all, you know, credit, I only have one credit card, so it's one bank, and just uh, <coughs> So when we met with you, um, Mrs. Carboni attended our meeting, and we went through things, and. We did make a recommendation to, you know, there was other things we could offer uh, about maybe dedicating the road to Brian rather than changing the name. We we're trying to make some recommendations not to change the name only because of the significant magnitude of impact on the residents. And again, we haven't heard from the third resident yet who lives there. And our understanding too that it could take up to a month, maybe 45 days before 
mail would start to come back to these homes because the process is electronic. It's all barcoded now. So once the name is changed, that barcode changes, the system has to update. So there's some risks and some concerns we, we were told about <coughs> that collected for us um, by speaking with uh, the Postal Service. And so we were trying to come up with alternatives that meet and achieve close to what you were looking for yes. without actually doing the name. And my concern in the discussion that I shared with them was you know, if we get into the business of changing names around town very easily, then you know, what happens when the next person wants to change Elm Street? And you know, this could be just become a very uh, a significant administrative change on the town. And um, so we did present them some street signs yes. options. We also had a plaque option that we presented to them. They have this really nice tree at the end of their road. You already built some tribute on there for their grandson, and we provided them some options. We could maybe install something to allow them to have an official plaque there as well to dedicate the road <coughs> to Brian. So that's kind of how we left it. Um, but you know, it's up to the board to decide if you want to support this. I am concerned without hearing from the other resident. I was hoping they were going to. I don't think they're. They they're not they're, here. They're not here. Okay. And we just. I just think it's important that we make sure that they're fully aware. And I, Deb, do you have that list of all the things that have to change? Uh, you'd already handed out one. I'd just like to read it out publicly so everyone can hear it. <coughs> Maybe if you want my sit right there. Right now, the microphone. Thank you. So these would be the changes the residents would have to go through. Change your driver's license, all utility bills, all deeds, stating the new name, all credit cards, all insurances, house, vehicle, etc. And then, again, the feedback, Deb, maybe you can confirm if you want. If you wouldn't mind coming to the microphone, just confirming what you heard from the Postal Service itself in the length of time. What the, uh, Debbie Carboni, assessing manager, the postal, the postmaster, I talked to the one in Boston as well as our local postmaster, and what they said is that mail is no longer hand um, separated and identified. It is all barcoded and goes through a machine. So the process to change mail is now done very differently. When you put mail in the local mailbox, it goes all the way to Boston to come all the way back to go to a local home. So with that being said, that could be at 30 days, 45 days. There, we you know, do have our own issues just in the house with mail and you know, delays on it and what have you. The postmaster in Boston recommended that what's done more often than not is the sign that is a dedicated sign to whoever it's in memory of. And you can put an emblem on there or a star or whatever you want to as opposed to changing the name of the road. You know, we get into changing the name of the road. Like Mike said, it's not that it's a lot of manpower on any of our offices. There's only three houses. But the concern definitely is, you know, it, the taxpayers and delays of <coughs> mail, delays of, you know, they'll all have to change their deeds. Um, CPC has to change their records. It was permitted as Bonneville Drive. Now it's being changed. So. It's a lot of internal stuff that's not time consuming. It's time consuming, but it's not heavy lifting, if you will. Whereas the dedication, I think, you know, would work also. Mrs. Minupelli. I don't know if we're going to make a recommendation, but I'd be in favor of changing the name to Brian's Way. I don't think it's a tremendous 
effort or impact. It's simply formally known as Bond Pal Drive. Deeds, you draw up a new confirmatory deed, formally known as Bond Pal Drive. You record the whatever vote is with the deed. You call your companies. You email companies nowadays. Everything's automated. It's really not a tremendous effort. I don't think there's going to be a well, ripple I mean, effect of people coming up saying, I want to change my street name now. There's a really specific purpose for which we can do this. It's, I'd, I'd be in fa favor of doing both a plaque and a name change, but as far as I'm concerned, it's three homes, two of whom are related, and another owner which who hopefully we'll hear from at some point or another, and I'd be in favor of changing the name. Any other questions? Mr. Schultz? Yeah, I'd be in favor too, but I, you'd have to have the third, in my opinion, you'd have to have the third person agree. So, uh, I don't think it's well, fair to dump it on them. Okay, no, no. Yeah. Well, they they signed the petition, they know. Yeah, but I mean, they'd they have to come here though and tell us I mean, they're, they're, okay they're not going to incur any expenses. The only expense is the uh, drawing up the, de the new deed, right, or whatever it's called. I already called the lawyer, I'm waiting for a call back. And, and I say, and again, we weren't concerned about the expense of it. We just needed to hear from them that they were going to be aware of the magnitude of changes that they're going to have to make. In well, that I mean, the only expense they the really potential. have, other than the mail, and I'm pretty sure they're aware of that. No, no, it's it, not the expense. It's the delay in their mail, the potential 30 to 45 days. They may not receive any mail. They have to change their personal driver's license. They have to change all their insurance. Well, I think the personal, I've gone through that before, and... You just go to the registry. They put the new address on the back, and I, I, when we it's time for renew. We'd like to hear it from them. I, I, I really, I, uh, I'll, uh, when are you going to be meeting again? Town meeting. Yeah. Well, it's here or at the high school? At the high school. <coughs> at six o'clock. But at six o'clock, yeah. yes, Mr. O'Leary. I, I think between now and then, if they can contact the town administrator to, uh, you know, so long as you know we're. We're comfortable that they're aware as to what, right. what hoops they have to jump through, and they're okay with that. You know that makes a huge difference Big time. in how we how we can react to the to the proposal. So if you can, I mean, if, if you can get your David to, to contact the town administrator in the next couple of days. Okay, so they don't have to come here. They can call, or they can come they can here. Call me. Oh, they Just sometimes she is in. She works, and her and her husband. Sometimes she's in. So the next time she's in, I'll see if. To call the town administrator. Call the town administrator to I mean, uh, uh, have the conversation. I'm not going to put a burden of the cost of changing the deeds and stuff. My wife and I will pay for that. Yeah. Okay. Again, and as far as changing everything else, it, it's less than an hour's work for me. Everything is online, so I just log in and change everything. Except the I think I can do that. Uh, I can go down there. So I think that's the key, is that the third individual... Yep ways in yep. good favor and as if, um, town administrator just has that list of information that Dev I just read off <coughs> if you could just go through that with them so they fully disclose all, all the magnitude of change they have to go through because I, I agree it's not a cost issue I, I it doesn't seem like it's expensive for any party here including the town um, I just there's some work to be done personally okay thank you You're appreciate it and that concludes the hearing. Correct. Right. They will close the hearing. And go to minutes. Let's see. Mr. O'Leary, I'll take a motion for a minutes of number six. Okay. This one here. Do we make any of the, what do we make recommendations on? I wasn't even using this. Just, um, I think seven, was it? We move to recommend. We recommend right. yes, the, uh, Only one of them. We Only budget one. amendment. Yes. Oh. Who seconded that? Do you remember? It was 5-0. Uh, five. It's the okay. second one, I think. Okay. Very good. So the rest of these we didn't take any action on. Okay. <coughs> so, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the September 6th, 2018 regular session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion and second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Oof. Yeah. Like oh. Mr. O'Leary. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the September 17th, 2018 regular session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? Mrs. Minnipelli. For accuracy's purposes, which I love the format that you're preparing them in. Um, but um, on the vote on page four, it's, we actually took two votes. Uh, the first motion was you know, when the resolve came, or Mr. Prisco's resolve came in, um, we talked about it and we deliberated about it. And I moved to amend it to add those three amendments. So our first motion was to um, incorporate the amendments. And then the second motion was made to um, pass, the, pass the resolve as amended and make sure that it was sent to all of our state um, and federal legislators, which it was. So that's missing, I think, in page, um, I think on page four of those minutes. So I just mo ask that we amend it for, the accu for accuracy in terms of what we did take for votes and, and um, you know, yeah. once amended, Pat, you know, approve them. It should capture the votes. Mm -hmm. I think it was just missing that one right, yeah. amendment. So the motion before us is to approve the September 17, 2018 regular session minutes as amended. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Schultz. By Andy, okay. All those in, uh, any other discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And Jay, you'll know where to insert. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the September 17th, 2018 executive session minutes as written. Second. second. I have a motion and second by Mr. Schultz. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Meeting schedule. Mr. Mr. Chairman, through you. Uh, we have set our meeting schedule up to the uh, town meeting, which is October 15th. Um, Karen, Jane, and I have had some discussion relative to a proposed meeting schedule to get us into the budget season next year, and we included uh, dates as follows. Um, obviously, Monday, October 15th being town meeting. I think we've discussed meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. I think that would be sufficient for us to get through the matters we have to get through then. Monday, October 29th. Um, we're suggesting there be a meeting. I know we don't normally meet on that fifth Monday, um, but uh, things get a little bit upended because of both the uh, state election, the strategic planning meeting, and a holiday on the 11th. So our suggestion would be meet on October 29th as a regular meeting. Meet on Thursday, meet on Thursday, November 8th for strategic planning, as was already discussed. Hold on, hold on. October 29th. October I'm going to be away that day, actually. Yeah, I didn't have. Did we already say we were going to? We didn't. We were proposing it. Okay. I don't think that's going to work out. The 29th. Okay. Yeah. And why do you feel we have to meet on the 29th? I, I we're going to be going um, more than a month between meetings if we if we don't meet. I, I, I think that we probably we're likely to have some sort of business come up this time of year. I mean, another option is to have a meeting on. Uh, Monday the 22nd, um, which should be the uh, immediately following town meeting. I'm not sure how much business we'll have to address at that point in time. Uh, I know there was some concern about meeting on Monday the 3rd. Is that right? 5th. 5th, excuse me, yes. Monday the 5th. Yeah, we couldn't meet that evening for some reason. Some early the day before the election. election? Yeah. It is the day before the election, that's correct. Was there a right, religious so holiday or something that day? No. no. It's the day before the election. election. Is it so it's the day before the state day before the election. The election. Can we the do the fifth? Was there a specific reason? And the fifth worked best for me, but I know, I know people have to prepare yeah, for the Yeah, I can't election. do the 29th. The fifth sign with me. I mean, is there a real impact, Mr. Masseri, on the fifth for you or Mr. O'Leary? Well, it might be out there holding yeah. a sign for November 5th. November 5th. <laughs> I don't want you out there holding yeah, signs at night. <laughs> it's dangerous, you know, especially with the sidewalk. <laughs> the side for, for Stay on top of a snowbank, hold the sign at night. Try to find a candidate you and I can agree on with all the sign. <laughs> oh, um, so mm. I don't think we have a conflict with the fifth, no. Mr. Gilberto. Do you? Uh, I would just want to check with the town clerk um, with regard to access in this building, but I, so I, I don't, yeah, let me follow up with her on that. 
Why don't we put it in tentative? Yep. It's tentative. And, uh, flying home on a red eye. You what? You're going to be in Seattle? Uh, flying home on a red eye Monday. Uh, so you get a nap and you come here. Beautiful. What? You get a couple, get a little bit of yeah, nap. Yeah, a little time for a nap. Perfect. Yeah, because we have... So we'll look at November 5th instead of October 29th. We've already established a strategic planning meeting for November 8th. We're suggesting Monday, November 9th, and then uh, the first and third Mondays of December, for which would be the third and 17th. And then based upon the- I'm sorry, Michael, you, you said 19th, 19th right? 19th. November 19th, okay. yes. Do, do you have this down? What, what page are we on? It's, um, if you're looking at the packet, it's page three. Page three. <coughs> yeah, it's in the meeting notes. Yeah, okay. All right. So you get the 15th, we know. 15th and the 5th. Correct. And we've already set the 8th. What's the 15th? Thursday the 8th. And it's so on November 19th and on November 19th. 5th for November. Yep. The strategic plan is November so 8th. November 19th. It is Thanksgiving week. Yep. And strategic plans on the eighth. Oh yeah. When's Thanksgiving this year? I believe it's the week of the nineteenth. Okay, that's right. <coughs> yeah. Then okay. December third and seventeenth. Correct. There is a there is a holiday on the third. It's Hanukkah, right? Hanukkah. I believe it's a Jewish holiday, no? Uh, yeah, but Hanukkah is a Jewish holiday. It's yes, eight I days long. It, it may be. Good. Yeah. I, I'm okay. I think I it's eight days. Make sure that yeah. anybody on the board, I'm not sure. Just trying to be respectful. And then uh, the 17th of December? It's the 17th. Was the other one? <coughs> Okay, that should wrap up the year. Oh, well, he's gone further. I mean, we offered suggestions <laughs> for January 7th, which is the first Monday in, Janu in January, um, the, and the 28th, and the reason for that was because the third Monday is a uh, holiday, Martin Luther King, uh, his birthday. So we suggested that the 28th and then you know, and we can go through these. I, I just more want to explain the rationale. Um, then we go two weeks later to Monday, February 11th, and then two weeks after that, Monday, February 25th. And the advantage in that is we're scheduling around the school vacation week, which also Pleasure. includes a holiday on Monday, the 18th. I'm trying to. Sir, January I'm still 20th. On January. No. January? I'm still on January. January. Sure. 20th. So January, January was the 7th and the 28th we were proposing based mm -hmm. on the holiday on. The th on the 21st. February 11th and 15th? Uh, 11th and 25th. 25th, I'm sorry. That's okay. February 11th? That's what we were suggesting based upon the way things were falling with uh, the I'm holidays. I'm, away, so I'm back by then, so that's good. 11th and 25th, right? 11th and 25th, yes, that's correct. And then March 4th and 18th? <laughs> Correct. Might as well keep going. Yeah. We'll be in election season. March 4th? Yeah, and 18th. That would, if we were to follow that schedule, it would put us uh, back on the 1st and 3rd Mondays. Um, we would be back to back between February 25th and March 4th in doing so, but we'd ob obviously also be into budget season at that point. Yeah, and you already gave us a budget schedule, I believe, right? There were preliminary draft uh, that we reviewed at financial planning team, and I believe it called for a hearing on that March 4th date. Are we going to pick the Saturday day? Is that in March? Um, we have been fluctuating between the last week of February and the first week of March. Uh, I don't know if I have that 
Well, you know, let me pull the schedule up now. Michael, that's that time of the year, right? Yeah. The Saturday. Yeah. It's typically, yeah. Did, did we say February 18th? February 11 and 25. Oh, I'm sorry. March? March? March 4 and 18. Okay. Okay. To come up with the date for the Saturday meeting? So right now we have it as uh, March 2nd. Saturday, March 2nd. That's budget day hearing. Are we 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. at that? Early. 8, 8 a.m. Okay. March 2nd. Okay. <coughs> That's good, right? We'll pull it in March? Yeah, I think it's just a good chunk of time scheduled. All right. Perfect. And town administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, can I ask for a brief recess? Yes. <coughs> just two minutes. Good, I need it. <coughs> <coughs> Michael. <laughs>going to reconvene. Mr. Goldberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, reading from my TA report. 
Uh, I attached a copy of the Attorney General's approval letter for uh, June town meeting. I believe a notice was run in last week's newspaper with regard to that approval as well. I also included a copy of the Youth Service Department's fall newsletter prepared by Youth Services Director Jennifer Ford and the Youth Services Committee. Um, I've also included in there a copy of the seasonal uh, community influenza clinics. Just reading from that, the first is Tuesday, October 9th from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. at North Reading Town Hall for individuals aged 3 to 18 years. And then Thursday on Oct October 11th from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. at the O'Leary Senior Center. And then Thursday, October 11th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, at Walmart ages nine for ages 9 and older. And that's something that we've been doing over the past few years, partnering with Walmart. We're doing that again this year through the, uh, through the Board of Health. And finally, I know that there's some information out there relative to the Park and Haverhill Street construction uh, project. It was delayed due to contractor availability um, and the contractor being out of state. However, we've been told that the contractor will be mobilizing this week with construction scheduled to begin on the far end of Park Street on Tuesday of next week, and DPW is in the process of putting out notification for that. So those are two important construction projects that will be taking place um, over the course of the next few weeks uh, on those uh, important roads. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you, if you wouldn't uh, mind, I have a prepared statement I'd like to read. Go right ahead, sir. <coughs> Excuse me. As has been discussed over the past year, the Department of Public Works is in the middle of a townwide water meter replacement project. The town has contracted with a vendor from which it's purchasing new water meters and with another vendor to perform the replacement of residential, commercial, and other meters over the past few months. In August, the contractor and the town identified that some of the new water meters delivered to a town water facility appeared to be missing. The matter was referred to the North Reading Police Department and a criminal investigation was initiated. Preliminary findings were provided to DPW Director Patrick Bauer and me in late September and an administrative investigation led by the DPW director commenced. Both the criminal and, and administrative investigations remain open today. The missing meters remain unaccounted for and are presumed stolen. While I am not prepared to comment on the number of missing meters due to the ongoing nature of the investigations, I can tell you that DPW staff are reviewing shipping information, invoicing, and installation records associated with the nearly 5,000 meters to be replaced as part of this project. The final projected water meter replacement costs have been anticipated to be far below the total appropriations for the water meter replacement project since the awarding of contracts. And at this time, we do not anticipate a need to request additional funding to complete the water meter replacement project despite this loss. The town is also consulting with its insurance carrier to determine if there may be insurance coverage on this loss. During the course of the investigations, security and access issues were identified that require improvements to be made. Some of these improvements have already been made, however others will require additional funding. For this reason, DPW is requesting additional funding at October town meeting to complete these improvements as soon as possible. Funding would be appropriated from Water Enterprise retained earnings and will not affect the FY 2019 water rate. For security reasons, we are unable to elaborate publicly on the nature of these improvements. I'm personally angry, disappointed, and frustrated that the town's in this position. Every avenue is being investigated to hold accountable any party or parties responsible for this loss. As this is an ongoing criminal and administrative investigation, I'm unable to comment further at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thank you, and the board was briefed in executive session, so I think we can go ahead and move on from this subject and turn it over to start with you tonight, Mrs. Minipelli, is if you have any old and new business. Mr. Schultz? No. Mr. Masseri? Do you have any old and new business you'd like to share. I just express my condolence. Not con I shouldn't say condolences, but to Mary Prenny in her accident that has taken her uh, out of That's right. for a while. And, uh, Liz just had surgery, but she's back on the scene tonight. Yeah. We'll pray for Mary. Uh, just a dedication to our employees. 
through some of the happenstances that occur. Sure. And Mary has been you know, a real uh, staunch uh, uh, employee and uh, representative to our elderly in town. And uh, I meant to ask you, uh, is there someone substituting at this point? Or so uh, we're using ex the existing staffing in the center to, to keep uh, things moving to the extent possible and some of the part-time staff are putting in additional hours to try mm -hmm. to um, bridge the gap, so to speak, as best as we can. Um, and we've been handling it that way uh, mm -hmm. for now. <coughs> is that it, Mr. Uh, my understanding is the recovery is going to take a number of weeks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mary is on the mend. She is uh, going to be a little late up for a while. Uh, but I also know that she's in contact with, uh, with the staff down at the Senior Center on a regular basis. And um, while not physically present, she's not far away either. Um, but, you know, we wish her a speedy recovery. And she's in good hands. She's got a registered nurse as a daughter who's Nurse Ratchet, as she refers to her right now, <laughs> daughter Liz. So, anyway, Mary's in good hands and is, is on the mend and feeling a little bit better, thank goodness. Other than that, I already talked about uh, passing a Senator Buell and uh, I'm back. Um, Mr. Goberto, I had these at my desk when <coughs> I arrived this evening. They're um, letters from the Flint Library trustees. There, am I supposed to do something? Do I have an action that I have to take on this? Uh, so I believe you, uh, the finance director, myself, and um, the Board of Library trustees were all uh, recipients of communication from the Board of Trustees of trust funds. Uh, relative to some work that they've done uh, to advise us as to the um, available balances in a variety of accounts, some of which are under the care, custody, and control of the selectmen, some of which are under the care, custody, and control of the Board of Library Trustees. Um, at the moment, I don't think there's any immediate action that's required to be taken on them, although um, I can tell you that there has been some discussion relative to investment strategy that's been taking place, uh, and there may be um, some further discussion on that with the Board. But at the moment, no, there's no action to be taken. That's all I have. All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you.